joining us for the Asia Pedal League 2020 Sri Lanka qualifiers. And we are just about to head into the grand finals. It's going to be Sarakolo taking on Tactical Nuke. Sarakolo, obviously, uh, the favourites to win the tournament. Uh, they won last year as well. They have been representing the country for all the Asia Pedal Leagues. I think that was there in the country uh, so far. And they have been a dominant force. Uh, throughout uh, Sri Lanka and Dota, but Tactical Nuke obviously again boasting of some uh, really big names like Chandra Zengetsu, we have Nubka, we have Beaver, Mandula obviously a really good drafter. I mean, we, uh, we do have a lot of players uh, just pitching in on both sides. I think this is going to be a really good uh, grand final. Yeah, I think this is the top tier level of gameplay that we'll be seeing. Uh, Probably the top tier two teams right here. I think we're just missing one team that could have contested this spot, and that is Victoria Secret. Yeah. Uh, they have been they are currently on national duty. Obviously, they have gone and they've uh, taken on three teams, so they haven't been they weren't able to participate in the Predator League. But with that, we have two top-notch teams for sure. It's going to be a very very exciting grand finals. It's going to have to be. It'll be very exciting to see whether we will be going to uh, game number three or whether we'll only see two games. It's going to be. Very interesting to see how that kind of turns out, but so far... What are your predictions though? Do you think it will go to a game 3? I think... Uh, I think it will be 2-0, Saragolo. Yeah, I also have a feeling it will be 2-0. Uh, but having said that, we have seen upsets uh, previously and even uh, uh, NHC in phase uh, gave a good one for Saragolo's money in the end. It was just a couple of mistakes, item choices uh, costing them the game there. But uh, during uh, the majority of the game, at least till... 20-25 minutes uh, into the game, it was a very even game between the two teams. But in the end, it was item choices which uh, kind of you know hindered their performance. And uh, I feel like uh, Tactical Nuke also has the knowledge and the experience behind them to you know not to make those uh, same mistake uh, mistakes. And they would have probably been watching the previous match as well. So a lot on the table for both teams. 300,000 rupees in uh, Sri Lankan money uh, as uh, prize money for the Sri Lankan qualifiers, and the winning team will be competing for 400,000 US dollars in Philippines. So, I mean, it's a lot of money on the line, a lot. Uh, and obviously representing the country in Philippines for the Asia Predator League, I mean, it's a huge opportunity. And uh, Sarakolo uh, and Tactical New both are obviously fighting for uh, this position. But uh, anyhow, getting into the draft, uh, we are looking at a winter vibe and Puck and a PL being banned out by Tactical New. I think Puck uh, is definitely 100% needs to be banned out. And winter vibe and Hawk is favorite. You don't want to give Hawke his signature hero. And from Sarakollo, Invoker banned out. I think giving Kavi Invoker is like digging your own grave. Yes. Because we have seen multiple times, even in losing matchups, where he had almost like, you know, 10 CS at like 6 minutes or something. He came back extremely strong, demolishing the entire team uh, solo. And I mean, that guy's sun strikes are just like beyond God. Like, uh, majority of the times, you don't even know whether he's actually landing a sunset. He's basically like walking or running away with someone and someone else dies somewhere across the map. That's how good he is with the Invoker, so you don't want to give that. And then we have the Doom being banned out again. A very strong hero in the meta, you don't want to just let it out. Uh, I feel like the only uh, really strong hero left from the meta is uh, Disruptor, who is uh, again one of the best heroes to pick up right now. If Tactical Nuke decides to go that way, but you also have Mandula's Dark Pillow if he go, wants to go that way as well. So a lot of versatile picks available. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. And they do go with the Disruptor again. I, probably one of the best first pick heroes that are out there. If he's available, you just go for it. I mean, Disruptor, man. Like, you barely spend anything on support items, you rush that Aghanim Scepter and maybe go in for a use afterwards or a Glimmer Cave and you're golden man, you're golden for the entire game. So with that we do see the Bane and the Unlord being kicked up here by Saracola. Bane we haven't really seen too much of but it does give you a very good BKB piercing disable as well if they ever do need it and obviously it gives you so much potential and now with the addition of the tiered items as well you can get even more cast range so which means you don't have to put your surf in any danger. You can cast exactly. it from fog as long as you have vision. So it will be a very, very huge positive to get those items. And with that, we see uh, once again, it's going to be Shaoban on the 
Chandler. We saw really great performance coming out from him in that uh, previous game as well, just locking down so many of these heroes, especially the strong spirit with both his pit of malice as well as the rod of Ato. So he was doing a lot of work and obviously he, the damage that he had every single time one of these heroes went down, uh, it was just he was actually contributing a lot in terms of damage per second as well. So yeah, it's nothing fun to be... Fact, uh, fun fact, uh, Wayne being picked up by Sarakol, right? Something that I have realized when uh, Hockey plays uh, position uh, 5, uh, he does not go for any hero that cannot trade and that, because I, I barely see him playing any other hero where you cannot trade off with, you don't play a passive hero, Hawking never plays a passive support. So Bane is another really good hero when it comes to trading off, with just because the brain sap you can always trade off and brain sap the uh, enemy and get that HP back up. So uh, that's one of these heroes that, uh, I mean another hero that uh, Hawking really loves to play. And we see Tactical New going with the Abaddon, a really strong hero, a good distal for Bane's ultimate even the Nightmare, uh, but uh, on the downside here though, if Bane does get off the Nightmare on the Abaddon, Abaddon is not going to be able to help his teammates during the fight. I mean, there is a, a bit of a pro and con there, but I feel like uh, it's a good dispel for Bane's ultimate. And meanwhile, we do have the Slark being ba banned out by Tactical Nuke again, another hero that uh, Satan and as well as uh, Munta runs a lot, a very strong hero in the patch as well, from what I've heard. And uh, I mean, I love the hero, to be honest, even when he was not in the patch, he, for me it was one of the best heroes in the game, uh, just so versatile, can do a lot during team fights, just the ability to go in and out of fight itself, it's, it's a huge, huge advantage. And uh, the Ursa, again, another, I, I feel like Ursa is either banned or picked, to be honest, even though we didn't see him in the previous game. Uh, we did see him. Oh, wait, we actually did. It, it was uh, team, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, team Pirates who picked up the Ursa. So Ursa is another hero. It's either banned or picked right now. Uh, it's not just in the Sri Lankan Dota 2 scene. Even internationally, I have seen Ursa either picked or banned at some point. Uh, people don't just ignore the hero. It's just way too strong to uh, to be ignored. Yeah, and it's really good against the Unlord, obviously. So exactly. that's why they're kind of taking it out. And Slark probably being banned out because Slark, you know, stats is everything when it comes with him and he can just run rampant once he gets a decent amount of stacks. And when you have a hero like Abaddon, who is available on the other team. Obviously, you can build in so many stacks because he pops his burrow time and then just keep on hitting him and even if he goes to full HP, you, are not, you don't really mind because you can keep stealing as many stacks as you want, increase your attack speed, increase your damage. So, you know, taking out Stark was a very good move and with that, they have taken out that defensive option that Saracolo had because Tusk is one of those uh, supports who can play that aggressive as well as defensive uh, role with his, you know, he can save with his snowball, he has his uh, ice shards to displace, he has tagged him for that bonus damage so he has a lot of uh, utility going on for him but so because of that uh, right now you know uh, banning out the task is probably the best idea and with that they do take out Haska here making sure that they don't get cheesed by any chance because Haska would be very effective against the side of uh, Saracol the only way to control him but they don't really have the damage either if they are someone defensive to kill him healed up like for example the Abaddon obviously that is a very strong combination but with that once again we do see Sarah Kolo going into uh, that draw ranger so let's see if the execution works out really well in their favor or not yeah and uh, draw ranger I feel like he's an extremely strong hero he has been yeah he did get nerfed uh, here and there uh, as uh, when as soon as the big patch came out after after that all the mini patches he was getting nerfed continuously but I feel Still, he is quite a strong hero, and Saracolo has this strike that they run with the Underlord and Draw Ranger uh, continuously to keep uh, pushing. Because I feel like Saracolo, even even when I was talking to them outside after their semi-final match, uh, they said that they always had a plan uh, to run the Underlord Draw Ranger because uh, one mistake is all that they require, and Saracolo is extremely, extremely good at capitalizing on those mistakes. And running a Draw Ranger, it allows you to capitalize really hard just because of. Uh, the ability to take down towers extremely fast, uh, the, you push really fast, uh, basically just capitalization on any mistake that the enemy team makes. And uh, I'm assuming that they will go for some sort of a save for the Draw Ranger, because right now the only save that I'm looking at is Nightmare from the Bane. I feel like there should be at least one more because Nightmare is a bit iffy uh, to kind of save the Draw Ranger in any uh, weird situation that he gets, uh, gets herself into. Uh, so probably we'll go for uh, another save. But in the meantime, Tactical Nuke did pick up the Slada. Uh, decent hero, uh, works really well against the Underlord, being so tanky, uh, works reasonably well. They need a right clicker with the Slada to, you know, combine uh, with that corrosive skin. 
Uh, they have quite a few options. They have the TS Lada. TS Lada is an extremely uh, good, extremely good uh, heal, uh, combination to have. Yeah, definitely, and you know, Slada is always going to be very beneficial because obviously Torch plays uh, the Slada also really well, and because of that, you know, it makes it very difficult. Uh, I mean, his execution, his initiations are very strong. Uh, he's one of those heroes, uh, I mean, one of those players who isn't afraid uh, to kind of go in and initiate and start the fights, and he can always disengage and then reinitiate once again. And now, without having to, uh, you know, buy wards or anything like that, he can always go into his items faster. He can pick up that blink dagger and then maybe go into the aggro scepter for more survival. So he has so many things that actually can work for him that might help them against uh, the team on the side of Saracol, but they do go with uh, the Naga Siren which has been very very strong in terms of an illusion based hero just like PL, very difficult to deal with, very good when it comes to pushing out lanes, applying pressure onto the map and obviously if you get the right relics you can get even, even more extra illusions that are very strong and very good at pushing the lane just as strong as the hero. And now we see a signature hero for In Search of Juliet which is going to be the clockwork but as of right now, if they can't manage to find a way to lock down this Naga Siren, I feel like she might become a huge problem for the side of Saracolo because Naga Siren will be played by none of maybe, their teams. Maybe, yeah, maybe the Kunkka will get banned out here uh, from Tactical New because Kunkka is a, another hero that Saracolo likes to play against these illusion-based heroes and we saw a really good Kunkka coming out from uh, Satan in the previous game so we might see the Kunkka picked up uh, yet again. Uh, uh, and the other thing is you're talking about Naga Illusions being a problem. Again, I feel that Drow Ranger deals with Illusions really well. Uh, the only problem is Drow Ranger needs to keep her distance uh, from the Naga Siren. Uh, if, he, if, if she manages to keep enough uh, spacing between the Naga Siren and, uh, and herself, she's going to be able to use a multi-shot as well as maybe build into an Agony Insert later on if it goes that late but I, I feel like Multishot alone is going to be enough to deal with the Naga Siren Illusions during the early game because that does a hell of a ton of damage. I mean we saw against the PL as well, uh, it clears out Illusions really fast and not forgetting the Underlord Firestorm which does extremely well, you have the Pit of Malice to follow up on top of it as well. Uh, Pit of Malice as well as Firestorm as well and uh, I mean uh, they, they ha I feel like Saracolo does have enough Tactical New did take out the Storm Spirit, one of Satan's favorites to play. And it's a decent hero because you want a hero to jump in on the Disruptor and stop the Disruptor from getting off that ultimate in the early game. We saw Team Face trying to do the same thing against the Winter Vivan pickup from Saracolo. And uh, I think uh, Team Tactical New was having the same idea. And I was talking about the Templar Assassin and the Slada combination. It's extremely strong. And TA is one of uh, Kavi's heroes. He plays it extremely well. And uh, even in the morning when we were talking about, when he said that what are his strong heroes right now, he was, uh, uh, he was leaning towards the TA, Shadow Fiend, you know, Puck, uh, Strong Spirit kind of, uh, and of course OD, his OD and Invoker. But that's the way he was leaning at and TA is one of his uh, favorites to play. And Synergy is extremely, extremely good with the Slada. Yeah, but right here I think, you know, if they do pick up the Kunkka, the Kunkka is going to deal with a lot of the problems that they do have. Yeah. Uh, because he can deal with the Naga Silent Illusions, the cleave damage is going to do a decent amount of work. And obviously the Torrent is really, really, really effective against the TA's refraction. So you can take him out almost immediately. And if you play it properly, you can always outplay in the lane and once you hit level 6 and get rid of our refractions, you can always get someone rotate in so in this case you can either get the Gibane or the clockwork lock down the TA get the torrent break the refraction get the burst damage with the boat so maybe that might be the most optimal pick here but maybe Saracolo have something in the pocket that we haven't even seen yet so with that we're going to be seeing the next pick it's going to be Viper oh, so it does work good. really well as well so it stops the uh, burrow time from activating automatically as well because you're manually activated when you're broken uh, it stops the bash coming out from the Slada it stops the Riptide from the Naga Siren as well as an outside and illusions and it also and builds sideways. extremely well from yeah. with uh, TA because TA is it's a bad matchup for the TA I feel like uh, there have been instances it depends on how well the TA plays the lane but he's up against Satan or either Munta in the lane Kavi I feel like Kavi can go head to head with these two players and since it's a losing matchup for him I feel like he might actually lose the game unless he's able to outplay uh, Satan in the lane somehow but uh, right now it looks uh, like Sarah Kolo has the draft right now, in my opinion. But having said that, Disruptor, Swara, TA, forgetting the Naga, forgetting Tenza Zenge to Naga side. I mean, we know that Tenza Zenge to Naga is a beast, an absolute beast. We have seen it time and time again. Forgetting that factor alone, uh, when combining Disruptor, Swara, and TA, 
uh, the three heroes together are uh, a force to be reckoned with. I feel like that those three heroes sanitize extremely well, and on top of that, you have the Abaddon always to uh, save the TA. But uh, yeah, I feel like it can go anywhere, but I'm leaning towards the Sarakolo draft right now. Yeah, definitely so. It will all come down to uh, execution and how RNG favors each team with those tiered items as well because they do now play a very huge part. Because by say, uh, even if the Viper does manage to counter the TA, if he's able to get one of those uh, tier, uh, tier, 20, tier 3 to level that I believe it was Orb of Destruction, yeah. it's basically a free desolator. So, you know, you can always come back into the game and with that, you know, uh, armor corrosion and in, on top of that, you have the melt minus armor and the slaughter minus armor. You can literally melt anyone if you can get basically lock them down. Uh, but right now, that would probably be the biggest problem that uh, tactical nuke have right now, other than the, uh, the, the third skill coming out from Disruptor, which is the Kinetic Field, uh, as well as the Naga Net and the Slada Stun. They don't have too much in terms of uh, uh, lockdown because Slada needs to get up close and personal. He needs to have Blink Dagger if he wants to initiate. And these are very elusive heroes. You can't really run up to them. Uh, so, you know, if you're trying to run up to a Viper, yeah, sure, you can get the stun off, but it's just a slithering crush. You won't be able to get proc the uh, bash. Uh, then, obviously, if you're running towards Draw, Draw can always silence you with the gust. Uh, Unlord can use his speed of malice to stop you. There are so many ways that Saracolo can deal with uh, the initiation coming out from the side of uh, uh, Tactical Nuke. So, uh, unless they get those items, the Blink Daggers, the BKBs, uh, the, you know, uh, the Agony Inceptors, there are really nothing much that they can do. So, early game, uh, execution is going to be very, very key in uh, how they perform and who comes out on top in this match. So, taking a look at the two teams, let me uh, introduce the two teams for you. So, on the Jaya side, we have Saracolo, Toad Boss on his Brow Ranger, Clockwork being played by Insta Julia, that's his signature hero. We have Viper being played by none other than Satan or Heshan. And then we have the Bane being played by Hockey and the Underlord being played by none other than Shaoban. And on the Radiant side, we have Tactical Nuke. We have Tenza Zengetsu on the Naga side and we have Slada being played by Torch. We have the Disruptor being played by Mandula. We have the TA, sorry, oh, we have the TA being played by uh, Nukavi and the Abaddon being played by Beaver. So it's going to be an interesting match. Both teams boasting of big names in the community, uh, extremely high skill. Let's see whether these guys can entertain us with a really even match. I think uh, I really enjoyed the face match, even though it ended suddenly. Uh, th that semi-final match was really entertaining, uh, especially those uh, first 25 minutes into the game. You know, both teams are going neck and neck, and that was really entertaining Dota. So hopefully, these two teams can bring the same level of Dota to the table and uh, entertain everyone who is spectating today. Yeah, definitely, and uh, just a little bit of a switch out it looks like. So it looks like Torch will be playing the offline role on the Slada. It's going to be Beaver this time who's taking the position 4 role as a disruptor. And it's going to be Mandula on Abaddon playing that position 5. So looking at the lanes, obviously we are expecting Viper to obviously beat TA. Unless we do see a lot of visits coming in from the two supports, obviously. Uh, top lane, of course, I feel might be touch and go a little bit. If they can get on top of the draw, they can probably bring her down. But with the clockwork being there, it might be uh, very difficult for them to kind of get on top of the draw range, especially with battery assault as well as the cogs coming out much later. Actually, they have uh, the clockwork uh, plus draw range has high kind of potential on the disruptor slaughter than uh, they have on them. Uh, just because of the fact that you have the uh, cogs to lock someone down and the draw range are doing so much damage from far away and there's nothing that you can really do about it at that point. So it's going to be uh, very interesting to see how they land this. You need to be extremely careful, especially as a disruptor. Meanwhile, we do see the Naga Silent contesting the initial bounty rules and they will uh, trade off bounty runes by the looks of it. Underlord and uh, Underlord and the Draw Ranger picking up one and the Disruptor and Naga Siren picking up one each. So it's a trade off of Boundary Runes to start off with, but insert of Julia taking quite a bit of damage there. He will run into the clock, I and mean, the clocker will run into the Slada, gets a few hits on him, and uh, Slada obviously just looking to charge his uh, dash. Yeah, but this is a very good start from Saya Tactical Nuke because uh, Clockwork was forced to use his self yeah. and then took even more harass right after that. So it might make him uh, have to go back for a little bit more regen, spend a little bit more of that money. But once again, you can see great harass coming out from Beaver here using the Tango to cut a path the way through the trees here and get that Thunder Strike onto Drew and look at how much damage he has, she has already taken. I mean, that's, that's a skill that you just uh, keep on spamming. It's an extremely good skill to have. And uh, bottom lane, actually, um, it's, I, I feel that like no one can actually die in this lane. 
Uh, just because of the fact that Underland is just extremely tanky, Naga, Naga Siren and Abaddon is not going to be able to do anything about it. And the other way around also, Abaddon is going to be able to save the Naga Siren at any given point. And unless, unless Naga gets extremely low and you put the Abaddon to, uh, Abaddon to sleep and then you go on the Naga Siren thereafter. But I feel like the action is going to be on mid lane and the top lane. Top lane has a lot of kill potential on either side, I feel like, but it's going to be harder for Tactical Nick to uh, get, in, uh, get on uh, the draw ranger, but uh, mid lane is where I feel like the most amount of action because that's going to be the interesting part of what is going to be happening. Just because of the fact that if the TA can outplay this Viper in the laning stage, they might actually run away with the game. Yeah, definitely. I think if the TA can get very, very strong here and with the synergy that he has throughout the whole squad, I think it might definitely work out for them really well. Uh, but right now, you know, uh, top both the top lane and uh, bot lane seem to be uh, going the way that we've expected. Mid lane also, we can see, uh, you know, level two on the Viper right now has done a decent amount of uh, harass onto the TA. TA is very low on uh, region for the moment. Needs to uh, use most of his region right here once again, trying to uh, pop a few of these hits. But once again, you can see just from that uh, corrosive skin as well as the Viper strikes coming in, nice denies coming out from the Viper. So it's a little bit difficult for the TA right here to kind of execute the lane as well as she'd like to. Yeah, I think uh, they went with the TA because, just because of the fact that uh, it works really well with the Slada, probably not expecting the Viper. Might have been better to pick up the uh, Lina if they knew it was the Viper. Win. Meanwhile, they are trying to go on the disruptor top lane. They are chasing him a little bit, uh, just a little bit of harass only though for the time being. But if the clockwork was able to close that gap, they would have been able to get that kill on uh, the disruptor. But meanwhile, disruptor turns around on the clockwork, dealing quite a bit of damage here. And the clockwork is just trying to stop the push. Meanwhile, they do pop the battery assault, uh, put in the disruptor inside. The draw ranger is there as well. But the slada on the backline onto the draw ranger, they might actually be able to clean this kill up. And yes, that is going to be first blood going in favor of the Drow Ranger, but the Drow Ranger is in a little bit of trouble here. Slard is trying to chase him down. He does not have the movement speed for this, or does he? Oh, so close. I think that's small. Oh, he gets oh. the dash off, but what a cog from the clockwork there. Because if he had got even a, a couple of units closer, the Slytherin Crush is going to be there, and that's going to be a dead, dead Drow Ranger. So a good play coming out from the clock of meanwhile mid lane we do see the viper has picked up a dd rune and keeping the ta at bay but meanwhile both uh, heroes are actually low on life so they both both are playing it quite safe for the time being yeah with that we can see so much region being purchased already on the side of uh, tactical new for the ta i mean getting some vision as well that she can use the vipers are currently with the dd damage uh, double damage dd damage, damage. double damage well right here but with that side blades coming into play i can really pick up a level under the toxin well, he might like, be in oh. trouble here taking quite a bit of damage kavi pops a fair fire as well is he going to chase those satan chasing after one more right click away and oh, oh, he's the the side. Side. He's surviving no that is so unfortunate almost going down there Popping the south at the last moment and he will be going back into that lane. And meanwhile on the top lane, we did see the Drow Ranger being taken down by the Beavers and Torch there getting under him. And meanwhile we do see at the bottom there's so much action across the map here. Been taking quite a bit of uh, harass there in the bottom lane, Naga Siren obviously. Now uh, ten, uh, becoming a little bit of a problem, he has the Riptide, he has the Illusion. Then you have uh, what you call the Apotic Shield to be doing damage. We're not being trying to uh, uh, running circles around the Abaddon at the moment. And uh, needs to be a bit careful. And they are trying to go on to the Slada here. The Cogs are there, the battery assault is there. Slada taking quite a bit of damage. He might actually go down here, gets pushed back. Is it going to be enough damage? And that is going to be enough damage in search of Juliet. Picks up that kill on the Slada. Once again, the top lane, that kill potential playing a huge part and with that, the uh, regen rune actually uh, spawning in the top rune here. And, you know, Kavi would have been very happy to have been able to pick that because he's been spending so much money on regen to kind of sustain and get as many levels as he possibly can. Uh, the Viper right now currently sitting at about 14 CS, but the highest CS right now is actually the Underlord in this bot lane. I mean, so this, is a, this has been the story of the game because uh, even in the previous uh, games that we saw the Underlord, uh, he, he has always been top net worth or top last hits uh, each and every time. And uh, it's just due to the fact that he can always spam his, uh, what do you call, uh, Firestorm, and there's no one actually who can walk into it and uh, try and deny it. 
as such, especially because there are two melees in the bottom lane, they will have to uh, walk into the fire storm to try and deny those creeps. So he has been just giving free CS. Uh, meanwhile, uh, runes are being contested. Uh, the Clockwork taking a fair amount of damage. He will get the rune, but is there a gym stack is the question. He does not have the mana for it, so he won't be getting it. Hockey, in the meantime, does pick up a rune as well. So runes are being traded by the looks of it, yes. It was so the five minute runes were traded between uh, the two teams. And Nagasai now is getting a little bit annoyed because uh, he had uh, enfeeble on him, but obviously can be taken away with Apollo Shield. Yeah, I mean, you don't want that in people on your end. Oh, disrupting trouble here. They do have the cost as well as the back to assault. He's running into the draw range as well, and he will get taken down. And that's another kill going in fear of Saracolo just getting caught out, out of position there. We were not being uh, careful about the position that he was at. Just, uh, you know, playing into the top of Sander who was wrapping around. CS wise, TA is having an extremely hard time. I mean, not too far behind the round 10 CS game. It's not too bad. Not as bad as I expected it to be. And oh, he runs into the uh, Bane here. Bane uh, uses the Enfeeble, stopping the TA farming. This TA is being absolutely shut on right now. In the lane, in the jungle, you name it, everyone's on Kavi right now. But mind you, I told you before as well, Kavi is a player that comes back extremely hard. You knock him down a couple of times, he'll come back even stronger. And the starter wanted to chase the draw. I thought he had a bash ready there. Maybe they would have got a kill if he didn't have the bash ready. And he needed two more hits for the bash to proc. Uh, he did use that spin though, and the clockwork wasn't anywhere to be seen. And once again, in the bot lane. Bot lane, a bit of a trade off going between the Abaddon and the Bane. They are chasing after each other, but Bane does have the brain sap. He has been sap as well as NP people and with that, oh top lane once again more action. They are going to go on through the clockwork, clockwork taking quite a bit of damage, the disruptor has gone down but the Slalom needs to be careful, he needs to back off right now, I feel like uh, the draw range are actually trading off extremely well and they will both back off, so the disruptor going down yet again and in the meantime, we have the Viper, just free farming man, there is no one contesting him. Sitting at 36 last hits at the moment against the 24 on the TA. Not too bad for the TA to be honest, but still the Viper is winning this lane quite hard. So with that Underlord also currently with that phase boost picks up. No need for him to pick up that buckler in this game it seems like. And he's just playing it very safe. He's getting all the items that he needs to kind of work things out. Uh, Dro Ranger has gotten a fair amount of kills. So she herself has gotten a very good start. But will it be enough to deal with the Naga Siren from Chengsa Zangjetsu? And right now he has that oh, level 6. Oh, they're wrapping around. They're trying to feel this there. As well as the start is going to be there. Stun is going to land as well. The stun might have been a little bit too early. But they are going to get the kill. They might be able to get the cock as well. Sada is still quite healthy. He's falling down low though. Stockholm, the bash is there, he gets the stun by the battle assault and the rocket player to finish off that kill. And now the disrupt the wants to fight the Cocker. Cocker has another battle assault coming off full down in, in the next 5 seconds. He has the cogs as well. He's not going to be able to close the gap. Disruptor running for his dear life. Run, Disruptor, run. He's running, but the battle assault is going to hit him. The cogs are going to be there and this might be another kill. The rocket player as well, Sada comes back in and he gets pushed back. Being a bit, bit to... Uh, Aggressive there, he should have waited a little bit until the cogs finish. Meanwhile, the Drow Ranger slowing things down with his multi shot. And the clockwork is going to be A OK. So, a two for one trade there. Uh, they did get the Drow Ranger, so they are going to be uh, not too disappointed with the trade off there. Yeah. So, with that, uh, Naga Siren already farms really fast and has picked up an Iron Talon as well. So, that is going to assist in kind of accelerating our flash, uh, her flash farming potential even worse, faster. And with that pain all rotating through here. Oh, Abaddon nice might there. be in a bit of trouble here. The slow is going to stop. Oh, the no! Oh, no! Oh, Misplayed. No. Little bit of miscommunication coming out there between the two players. Uh, not waiting for Bane to release the Nightmare there. But with that, starter finally hitting level 6 has that amp finally and this is going to make that kills that much faster and more easier to kind of execute. But right now, this Viper in the mid lane is just so strong, Terror. So much uh, CS I mean, under... Chaban Tower is down right now. There is so much pressure being put. Abaddon really can't do much to kind of contest. And with that, the Chaban Tower falling down before even 10 minutes into the game. So that's a lot of gold going the way of Saracolo. 4k net worth lead already. And that's majority a huge of the, Yes, definitely a huge lead. And majority of the, the top three are actually the top three cores on the side of Saracolo. 
Yeah, uh, that's just extremely good for me. Meanwhile, the TMI gets run down the hook shot is there as well. TA trapped inside the cross, did the back, we saw TA falling down low. He gets pushed back from the court, he's still getting chased down. Where is the Grims back? The Grims back is going to save him. And now the Viper joins the fight. The Slada wanting the fight here, he needs to be careful. The Viper fight is there, the TA cannot join the fight. The Slada might not have needed to rush in there, he tops the shrine, but you know the pushback, lovely cocks there from the clockwork and now he cannot get away. He will get taken down. Ground range in the meantime, you know a little bit of trouble. They want more. They are going up for GA. TA might get taken down here as well and he will go down. That's three heroes falling down on the side of Saro. Sorry, Tactical Nuke and Saro Kolo is on a roll. But in the meantime, Naga Siren free farming. But he is quite far behind compared to the Viper, the Drow Ranger as well as the Underlord. But I mean, we are talking about the Naga Siren as soon as he gets that Manta style is going to be accelerating his form significantly and uh, there won't be a hero on the map who can catch up to it when, especially when uh, Tenza Zeng gets to play this Naga Siren. He has his shenanigans when it comes to, uh, when it comes to pushing lanes, so it's definitely going to be interesting. Now yeah, with that Bane actually going for the courier and Hawkey with the courier snipe once again. This time, yes, I think he has gotten three courier kills already in this tournament. Like, what is going on? He's like the courier snare right here. Yeah, we should have an award for courier sniping. And yeah, for, for now, right here, I think only the Naga Sirens the only saving grace that uh, the side of Tactical New kind of have because Kavi, there are really great rotations coming in from the supports. Oh, one more courier goes down, but this time it's going to be Shaobans. Couriers are dying left, right, and center. See, people thought that having one courier was a problem, and now there is five couriers, and people are just feeding away gold now. I mean, yeah, it, so it seems like. But right now, I mean, I really like the pressure being put by In Search of Juliet as well as uh, Hawkey on his bane. I mean, they're looking for and pressuring this TA as much as possible. And that is putting so much pressure. You can see the TA nowhere near where she wants to be at 11 minutes into the game. So hopefully he might uh, get I mean, less. I mean, he's on par with the bane, which is the position uh, 5 on the side of Saracolo, which is really, really troublesome right now for the TA. Went into a losing matchup. I feel like Javi has been putting these situations time and time again. He has performed, he has come back from it. Let's see whether he can repeat the. But meanwhile, Drow Ranger going to work on that top tier one tower with the Viper. There is no way that tactical new can contest this at the time being, at least. We'll have to wait and see how this game unfolds for the time being. It looks like it's all Sarah Colo, Sarah Colo, Sarah Colo. Yeah, and with that we do see another T1 tower falling. This time they are lurking around, looking for anything that they can try to get. Uh, Clockwork does have a little bit of vision to work with here, has uh, vision on two of these heroes. Will he commit using the hook shot? They might be able to catch out uh, Mandila here, but with that he does get the D ward down. And meanwhile, uh, Underlord in the bot lane with his Vladimir. Yeah, he's so strong right now. Vladimir's already picked up, has the face boots as well. Taken down the T1 tower in the bot lane. And look at the map uh, presence coming in from the side of Saracolo. Not even bothering to go into their half of the jungle to farm. Yeah, I mean, they have taken down that uh, mid tier 1 tower as well as uh, the top tier 1 tower and the bottom tier 1. They have complete, absolute control over the enemy jungle. And we know we do might see an engagement here. Underlord might be able to cover everyone here. Can they lock him down though? He's so, so tanky. There is no net. He pops the slip. They are desperate for this kill. But where are the TP? Meanwhile, top lane, they are cleaning out kills. Sada goes down top lane. They are going to work on the tier 3 towers. They need to head back. There is no song of the siren right now. And they are. Well, the TP is coming in. The Naga Siren, he is going, he needs to go back into base. The TA does not have a TP. He's, he actually has it, he's holding on for the, for the time being. And Sarakolo uh, decides to back off, I think. Yeah. They do decide to back off the grip. The saving grace for tactical nuke there. I mean, yeah, sure, they got the kill on to the Underlord, but then uh, how much did you actually give up? You gave up a tier 2 tower, you almost gave up a tier 3 as well. Rotations being forced, so much of your farm being taken away from you. Uh, dominance being shown by Saracolo in this game number 1 so far. And look at the farm on this Viper right here. He does have a hookshot ready, guys. The rest of the team is there, but there's really no way for them to kind of link together. And with that, once again, looks like instead of Juliet getting corrosive haze here, trying to bait in these players whether they want to try and go for him. The Naga Siren is in the area as well. No song this time. And once again, just trying to let him farm around here. Does I have the iron challenge. So scared right now. The, the top of is in their face, and they cannot even contest that with uh, around three heroes around that area even. And right now, oh, they are sending him into the sky. Yeah, Naga Siren is going in on to the Viper trying to, you know, deal a bit of damage. Not really working out. Meanwhile, the TA 
is trying to find whatever he can and he's extremely on the palm. And meanwhile, uh, Tier 2 Tower mid as uh, is being taken down as well. Uh, Abaddon moving forward, you can see double hook shot into the Abaddon, Abaddon gets the lock, locked in, but the Viper, uh, sorry, the Corrosive Hit wasn't there in time, or the, the, sorry, the Nether Toxin wasn't there in time, Borrowed time was popped, and it is going to be a okay for the time being. Meanwhile, will they go for Tier 3s as well? Viper is so confident he wants to go for Tier 3s. Meanwhile, the Tier is nowhere to be found. Now the Siren, split pushing on the top lane. Where are the heroes? Uh, taking a look at the mid lane yet again, uh, these guys are just so adamant about going, but they will back off. There is no glimpse back on the clockwork. Clockwork will be able to chip you out, and the unlock will be able to walk out as well. It looks like they want to head back to grab some of these bounty rooms, and so they are going to be able to get through right there. And with that, you know, Naga Siren as well as GA is trying to push the map as much as possible, force them to rotate back and try to get items right now. And the GA is still suffering quite heavily. Uh, the Draw Ranger currently with that iron, uh, iron wood tree, as well as the Dragon Lance right now, according with the. Uh, Viper as well, who picked up his Dragon Lance previously as well. So right now it's just a little bit of a farming game, and once uh, Saracolo are ready, we might see a Roshan into the game ending because right now they take on every single outer tower except for the one on the bottom half of the map, the only one left standing right here. And once again, you know the vision that they were playing with currently has kind of run out. They do have a little bit to work with. Uh, as you can see, they only have this one that's kind of deep in right now, but other than that, they don't really have too much that is providing them with the information that they kind of need to play aggressively. But a bit of debarding going there by uh, Hawkey, uh, catching out the uh, Observe Ward as well as the Sentry, debarding that. And uh, I feel like they are in a much better position with this draft than they were against Team Phase uh, at this point of the game. But not forgetting Naga Siren still uncontested, farming the entire time, catching up with that farm, has overtaken the Naga Siren on the Draw Ranger, uh, closing upon the Underlord as well. But uh, right now, other than that, uh, there's basically nothing that they can do uh, other than getting the farm that they require. Let's have a look at when they decide to push it going to be the time. Probably after they take Roshan, until they do take Roshan, I don't think Sarakolo will be looking to push. Yeah, it doesn't look like they have too much of an idea that it's happening once again. The Roshan is going to fall, and with that, the Clockwork might be able to catch the start, oh! but it's just the hook shot. Real unfortunate right there. That is a big miss though. I mean, it is nowhere close to Mila. Naga Siren goes and catches too in the Song of the Siren, but he's going to TP out. They don't want to fight this. No, he cancels the GP. He wants to fight this. Where are the team? Where is the team? No, he gets caught out. And no! Tenza Zeng gets you. What are you doing, man? Um, that was massive miscommunication from his teammates. I'm not sure. I think he had the idea to fight. The team wasn't ready to fight. And in the end, Strong on the Siren wasted and a kill given away. And Shaoban just taunting right now with his uh, Firestorm, uh, waiting for, uh, until the creep uh, spawns, and they will be going to work on the Chair Tree Tower. So with Mid lane. The aura, with the aura damage right now, you can see, look at him just chunking down this Chair Tree Tower, and then it is coming down by uh, the Abaddon right here. But everyone needs to just back off and respect the dominance coming out from the side of Saracolo. And once again, the first lane is there, but They've lost the TP, signs are open, they've caught the air, here comes the grip and she's going to go down. I think this game number one is all over. Yeah, I, I, they look, look a pretty bleak right now. I, I have a feeling that uh, Tactical you know, uh, cannot come back from this position. Uh, especially just the way that they dropped, I think Sardar means the dagger, they need to get on top of the Ranger, which they are not able to do. And uh, they have very true tank to front lines as well, with the Viper and the Underlord tanking in front. Clockwork on top of it as well. They have three frontliners who are uh, just basically creating a barrier from uh, tactical nuke actually reaching that draw range. And meanwhile, we might see an engagement. They want to try and defend these uh, tier uh, three or rather the racks in the mid lane, but no engagement thus far. And Slava taking quite a bit of damage from the Viper, and that's the racks falling down on the mid lane. He has joined the fight, but they cannot do anything other than award two man root here with that. Uh, bit of malice. Viper uh, strike was there on the startup, but looks like they will get their set of racks. And uh, 
perfect oh you are trying to back off here sada might actually be chasing to catch up he is going to try and catch by the slip the hook shot back onto the disruptor disruptor with the ultimate on to joe is this going to be enough tf from the back line trying to here uh, hammer in and the draw range coming forward almost taking down the nagar side nagar side fall down low one more hit away can he get him down but the brain with that gimmick of moving forward with the brain so will clean out the nagar side and three hero dead four hero dead and the only saw is the tf left alone in the middle of five and that is GG well played call from Tactical New Gary Sarakolo taking game number one of this BO3 series. What a dominant game from them. It felt like they were not in trouble throughout their entire game. They had their job, they executed it to perfection. They were not worried at any given point. Dominant yeah. performance from them. Yeah, great performance coming out from them. It was very clean, very crisp, very disciplined. Uh, Dota coming out from them, made all the right decisions. The great rotations coming in. from both the supports to pressure the ta in the jungle is what kind of broke this game open because the ta was so far behind that there was really nothing that she could do to even come back i mean we've talked about kavi as a player how good he is but with this much pressure this much execution coming out from the side of sarakolo there is a match that he can really do to uh, you know bring his team into a good position they had so much to kind of deal with naga siren as well because even though she had a good lane she was only one who had a good lane the ta had a really bad lane the top lane kind of died multiple multiple yeah. times that gave yeah. the door ranger a lot of uh, uh, space a lot of farm a lot of items which usually she doesn't get so with that you know a little bit few issues here but i think they can talk it out and yeah. fix it for yeah. the next game yeah next game uh, obviously it's a bo3 series so they do have a chance to come back but now they are on the brink of losing that spot to fly to philippines to represent the country for 400000 us dollars prize money as well in philippines but and of course the prize pool right here in sri lanka of 300000 so do stay tuned in we will be having game number 2 live shortly so don't go anywhere more action packed dota coming your way right here at the ace of bradley 2020 sri lankan qualifiers
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You are joining us for the Asia Premier League 2020 Sri Lankan Qualifiers Grand Finals Game Number Two. Sarukolo taking on Tactical New. Sarukolo obviously winning that first game in a very dominant fashion. We'll have to wait and see whether Tactical New can take the game number two. But of course, they are fighting for an entire prize pool of 300,000 Sri Lankan rupees, and the winners will be going to Philippines to represent Sri Lanka in the Asia Premier League and have a chance to fight for 400,000. US dollars. So a lot of money on the line, a lot of opportunity on the line. Let's take a look at whether Tactical New can do it. So going back to the previous game, what can Tactical New do differently uh, to win game number two right now? Ban Underlord. Ban Underlord. Yes, I, I feel like uh, giving the Underlord <laughs> multiple times. I mean, they saw how strong he was during the semis. They gave him in game number one, maybe banning out in game number two. Yeah, maybe just take out the Underlord, uh, maybe go for a different direction. Maybe if you do ban out the Underlord, they'll go for a different uh, carry as well. Because so far, uh, the draw range has been working out for them really, really well. But the pushing strat comes in with the Atrophy R. And if the Atrophy R is not in the equation, the pace at which they can take towers is much slower. And maybe, you know, maybe you might have a different uh, matchup, maybe something that's easier, something where you have kill potential. Because most of the time, when they do pick up the Underlord, they always ban out the Ursa as well. So that way, uh, I feel like Ursa is right now the one of the strongest safe laners to kind of deal with the Underlord. I mean, it's not that there isn't anyone else. I mean, it comes down to the combination, obviously. But like you said, Hawkey never picks a support that cannot trade. 
Yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, like, uh, even if they go with a different direction, I feel like hockey will have their number. Obviously, has come, in, uh, come for the tournament with a plan. They knew that most probably that they will be facing off against Tactical New coming into the tournament. Uh, probably uh, up there in the two to three strongest teams that are there and the way that the bracket was made. Probably expecting ta uh, Tactical New to be their opponent in the grand final. So, hockey definitely has a plan and he knows these players quite well. Uh, especially the likes of Tenzer Zengar, Subiva and uh, uh, even uh, Shauban and Torch. I mean, because hockey has played with these guys before. The entire team, hockey has a read on what they play and what exactly uh, to do against them. So he definitely will have a plan of action in, in the event that they do ban out the underlord. But uh, as I say that we will be starting the game, we are just starting the game and getting into the drafting stage. And uh, I have a feeling, I, I have a feeling we are looking at a first phase underlord ban here. Win survival, first, I mean, as to be against hockey, you need to ban out that win survival. Invoker, again from Sarakolo against Nukkavi, not a hero that you want to go for. Standard bans again, uh, Disruptor getting taken out, another very strong hero, not, I mean, they picked it up the previous time, but right now they're banning it probably because they have first pick, they might actually try out the Underlord even, I'm not sure, they can try it out if they want to. Maybe they can execute it the same way that Sarakolo did, we'll wait and see. But Sarakolo going the same bans, Invoker, uh, Nick's Assassin, uh, let's see where the Underlord gets banned here. This is the third ban of the first phase. Tactical Nuke looking for this ban. They're thinking about it. I think they're itching to ban the Underlord, but whether they will leave it out is the question. I mean, as I see, there are two options here. Either if they do have first pick here, they don't ban Underlord and they take Underlord for themselves, or they ban the Underlord here if Saracolo have the first pick. I think that would be the most uh, ideal scenario right now. They here. do have the first pick by the looks of it. So Yeah, so they do have the first pick. So because of that, I feel like maybe they should most probably uh, let Sarakolo ban the Underlord and pick it up for themselves. And But then we might even see a first phase Ursa. But if that's the case, then they can probably counter it pretty well as well. So they can always play offline Ursa as well. But most of the time you don't see that first phase Ursa. So maybe you might be able to ban it out maybe somewhere in the second phase and you know go for a better matchup because you've taken out the Winter Vyvern as well. I feel like Winter Vyvern might be one of those supports who does really well against Underlord because he does percentage based damage when he uses uh, his first uh, spell. So, but with that, they ban out Stark and they ban out Park. So, are they going to pick up the Underlord here or are they giving, giving it to under May, Sarakolo once again? Uh, I, I feel like if they give it to Sarakolo yet again, they should have a plan behind it. Uh, they got dumpstered by their Underlord in the lane. Naga really didn't get any farm. Maybe they will go for a Ursa, Ursa Warrior. You have Gyrocopter who has a decent uh, magical damage in the early game. You can play the Luna who uh, kind of is an iffy hero. Has a, uh, from what I saw, it has a decent win rate uh, in this patch. Might go for the magical build on Luna if they really want to go and uh, will be able to deal reasonably well with the Underlord with that Lucent Beam in the lane. And that's a very annoying skill to uh, deal with during the lane set. So Sarakolo opening up the same way. Underlord as well as Bane, the same opening. They are sticking to what is tried and true. And let's see whether Tactical Nuke will have an answer for this. They go with the Lich, which is decent uh, during the team fight because uh, from what we saw, the way that Sarakolo was playing, was they were grouping up uh, past uh, like the 15 to 18 minute mark. They grouped up as five, pushed down towers. So Lich kind of deals with this spell. You have the frost arm on towers. You have the chain frost to, uh, you know, disrupt, dis, uh, basically disband the squad from just sticking together. We'll have to wait and see what they do here. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to wait and see, obviously, the second pick. It's going to be Triant. So Tactical Nuke uh, revealing their hand very, very early into this game right now. And I feel like Hawkey will have a lot of control over what he, how he can kind of uh, execute this lane. And obviously Underlord doesn't care whether you have uh, uh, the Trian's uh, armor or not because obviously, you know, his uh, Firestorm will burn through most of that uh, uh, damage or the most of that damage block. Uh, with that Bane and Underlord is so far very, very strong combination. So unless you can pick up someone who can kind of out-trade the Bane, I feel like you're never in a really good position because the Bane, once again with Brain Sap, uh, makes it very difficult to kind of get up, get out on top in terms of the trade. So it's going to uh, come down to who's paired up uh, with either the Treant or Lich in that safe lane. But Tactical Newt here, very confident that they don't need to deal with the Underlord. So I, I think the plan behind it was with the next ban from Tactical Newt. The Underlord was so good because they were frontlining the Underlord with two other tanks and to let the Drow Ranger sit behind and deal all the damage. So right now they have taken out Drow Ranger, they take out Clockwork, they're taking out anyone who works well with the Underlord. And on top of that, 
the trim right i feel like he trades off reasonably well against the bane so he won't have as uh, as of a rough lane as he did before so uh, i think uh, who mandula uh, mandula or torch whoever is playing the trim protector will be having a better time against the bane uh, in the laning stage if they do decide to go that way uh, instead of putting the lich in that lane and i feel like that's the way that they have to play it i don't think lich is the uh, hero to deal with the bane i think trim is a better uh, hero to deal with the bane uh, but again though they like you said they reveal their two supports they are lacking uh, in terms of a lot of instant lockdown they are completely dependent on the trident ultimate and the sinister gaze not the best lockdown sinister gaze it's good for a single target but you know overall when during a team fight it doesn't really do much and uh, on the other side we have saracolo banning out the doom uh, as well as the ursa warrior again ursa warrior extremely good against the underlord and uh, he will get uh, taken out for the time being Yeah, so with that once again, it's going to be Saracolo with that first pick in the second phase of the draft. Uh, looking at things right now, looks like Saracolo are comfortable in the position that they are in right now because they do know the two supports. They know what they need to kind of deal with both the Trian and the Lich. They know that they are lacking lockdown on the side of Tactical New, and they'll probably have to kind of. Uh, fix that with one of the co picks that they are going to go with so we might see another offline start as well and that's why we've seen the clockwork and the drop being banned out so maybe because of that they might have a better laning stage as long as they have you know uh, melee versus melee match up instead of having the draw and the clockworks because the clockwork did so much work uh, in that lane you know he was able to isolate uh, the he was able to isolate the uh, disruptor as well as the slada and then they were able to uh, get the kills from that and then get you know basically a really good start off uh, from the game yeah for sure i mean they played it extremely well isolating the targets that they need to clockwork played really well in the laning stage uh, getting those kills for the draw range uh, even though the draw was not getting a lot of farm in the laning stage uh, he got the kills that was necessary so saracolo going back to the task that is uh, in such a juliet zero he played it extremely well against phase as well might work out for them again they are sticking to what they know oh, monkey king I like this pickup because that hero can actually deal with the underlord. Underlord doesn't really fare well against the uh, monkey. I actually completely forgot about uh, the monkey and the monkey and trian predator combination is also extremely strong. You have the slow from uh, what do you call it? Uh, Leech it? No, not Leech it. Uh, his initial first skill. Initial first skill. Like I had to go back and check what the name is. I'm really sorry. But yeah, uh, his first skill combined with the monkey king is going to be able to deal with this uh, underlord during the lane stage. I think it's a really good pick. And uh, Saracolo now. we know what sarcolo is doing we have the two supports revealed we have their off lane revealed and on the side of tactical nuke we have their portion 1 or maybe portion 2 uh, revealed as well as the two supports and sarcolo is going shadow to pick up ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. so this is going to be very interesting so shadow fiend after the new meta has changed quite a bit and just being able to funnel in mangoes to himself he can destroy most lanes that he goes up against this pure fact that the raise does insane amount of damage and you can keep using them over and over and over again because they only cost about 95 mana and every time you use a mango you kind of replenish that usage and then obviously mana. now with uh, i think you know it used to be 75 ah, okay then they increased it. Uh, so then shadow pain i don't know how it is now maybe they reduce it again i mean we have to find out uh, and then obviously the new fear that comes out whenever you use the requiem of souls and oh. with that we do see the outworld devara making an appearance here kavi kavi god od so i i feel a like majority of the mid players in this country loves the od i don't like the od probably why i am not a mid player i never proc uh, even after the change i always exactly. run out of mana on that hero exactly i always send run out of mana and i mean i don't like that hero at all probably why we are not mid players but all the mid players in the country seems to love this hero Uh, a lot and with the buff for the agrim scepter where you get two uh, astrals a lot of players have been uh, rushing for that uh, agrim scepter early on uh, to get those extra to get that extra charge on astral imprisonment and uh, in the meantime waiting for the last two bands on the side of saracolo and tactical new saracolo has the last pick right now and uh, tactical new obviously having to pick up their off lane by the looks of it unless yeah. they put the monkeying off lane which is unlikely no i think they put the monkeying against the underlord and they ban out uh, but they need to ban out here is a safe lane obviously saracolo something that is good against the od something that is good against the monkeying they have to, they have a decent amount of time they have a lot of reserve time left as well so they want to think about it a little bit more and then you know ban out whatever hero that they need to and then give uh, tenza a very good favorable pick i mean they still have aquarn in the pool and aquarn is pretty good against most of these uh, 
uh, heroes here on the side of Shadow Koilo because if you think about it, uh, in, t in terms of sieging, they probably want the Shadow Fane to kind of siege uh, along with the Underlord obviously, but with the bubble coming out from the Arc Ward, they can probably delay it quite a bit. Correction, Tenza is on Tactical Nuke and not on Saracolo, so I don't yeah, think so they... Yeah, that's what I meant, so Tactical Nuke can pick up the Arc Ward here if they want. Ah, okay. So then they will have to put uh, the monkeying on the offlane or... Uh, yeah. Ah, I, no, no, yeah, no, then it becomes an issue, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's a bit iffy, I was like wondering what, <laughs> yeah, where your train of thought was going. But I think it's going to be Tenza then gets to Monkey King with uh, Kavi on the OD, or maybe even Biva, Biva also plays the OD, and all mid players play this hero, so... Uh, either one of them can play the OD, uh, but what they're looking at right now is an offlaner. Uh, they have... what do they have? I mean, Centaur was kind of taken out. Other than that, of course, they do have the Magnus. It is in the pool. It does synergize decently well with the Monkey, and then that at least it will give them uh, BKB piercing uh, uh, ultimate as well. And maybe, you know, because most of the time, Task, Underlord, Bane, I mean, they tend to use Snowball. They just need someone to kind of frontline. I mean, the Teatrian Protector, if he can get a tanky enough, he can be the one who initiates fights for you and let the Magnus kind of counter initiate. Uh, that is an option that they have to, they can use if they want to. Uh, and obviously, you know, with the Sanity's Eclipse being as strong as it is, even though it did get nerfed, obviously, because it was too strong, yeah. right, just, you know, one-shot people without even having to steal Intel. Uh, but now, of course, after everything has changed, the OD has been reworked a little bit. We might probably see the uh, Agnim's OD as well, just to have that double save once again, double Astral Imprisonment, uh, you know, take a certain amount of uh, heroes out of the fight as well. For and it's a Tony. We got the Tony in the pool, and that is going to be Beaver on the Tiny. I like this pickup to be honest because it bursts down the Bane, it bursts down the Shadow Fiend if it gets to that. The Shadow Fiend goes for damage right now. He goes in for maybe a Yasha into a Manta with Dragon Lance or maybe Shadow Blade, something of the sort. He's not going to be building into stuff like Agony Scepter which gives you a lot of stats. So he's going to be able to burst people down. And uh, especially the Bane, taking the Bane out at the start of the fight is going to help them out a lot. I like the pickup from Tactical Nukan. Yeah, and now Tiny with the new change, obviously having that tree permanently, yeah. he can throw it and then there's a little bit of a cooldown, he can pick up the next tree. And only thing to balance that out, they kind of nerfed the toss a little bit and that was his main source of nuking damage. But Sarah Kolo picking up a Templar Assassin, which means this might be a safe lane Shadow Fiend. Interesting. So safe lane Shadow Fiend is extremely good with the task against the tiny i feel like just because of the fact that uh, like i said each of each of them have their own individual couriers shadow is going to be able to get a lot of mangoes delivered to the lane bit of a beer draw from saracolo but i like it i like it I mean, it can work. I mean, that's the thing. That's the beauty of Dota, right? I mean, if you if you if you can execute it properly, anything can work. And there was once, uh, you know, a meta where there was a lot of shadow fiends played in the safe lane as well. Uh, so with that, let's see if they can execute it and close out uh, this uh, grand finals, or whether we can see a change coming out from the side of Tactical Nuke, and maybe they can finally deal with this Underlord menace. Yeah, and the other thing is uh, the TA and shadow fiend also synergizes quite well because of the presence of the Dark Lord. You have a minus armor and then the tier builds into a desolator as well. So more minus armor and then what was the neutral item? Uh, destruction, orb of destruction? Yeah, orb of destruction. Orb of destruction, uh, if uh, either the TA or the shadow fin picks it up. More minus armor, I mean, it's a lot of minus armor that you're looking at if it goes that way. Uh, but definitely interesting draft from Saracolo. We'll have to wait and see how it works out. But uh, in my opinion, Tactical Nuke has the draft. But this, if you pick with the Shadow Fiend safe lane, might work out for Saracolo. I'm going to go with Saracolo because, I mean, they are the stronger team right now. And Hawkey wouldn't have just gone for a pick without having a plan behind it. Yeah, so and I also like uh, so something else that really synergizes, something that uh, most people don't look at in terms of, you know, when you finish up a draft, uh, it is the fact that, uh, you know, uh, which team can Roshan better? Right, so if you take a look at it, you know, the Saracolo team does have much more potential in terms of uh, being able to uh, solo or basically do Roshan faster. Because if you look, uh, Monkey King, OD, uh, Tiny, they don't do too much against uh, Roshan. I mean, in terms of, it'll take you a while, unless you're a late, late game, it'll take you a long while to actually get that Aegis of Immortality. And, you know, usually uh, Aegis is where the game usually turns on its head, you know, when having that extra life on a very important co-hero. Uh, so and we saw that in the previous game as well, 
uh, when uh, it was against the face, the semi finals against face, as soon as Sarakolo got ages, the game was uh, basically over. They just ran over all the towers and the base itself and all the players on the side of uh, face. So, Roshan definitely a very important part. But we are, we are heading into the first set of rooms here. Let's see how it's going to go down. We haven't seen any Roan kills right now. I think probably in the first match, I think, where the Medusa went down in the first semi final. But other than that, uh, we haven't seen a level one bounty Roan. Uh, death as of such uh, and they really don't have a lot of killing potential but meanwhile ma monkey king attack range is just way too good uh, meanwhile lich with the first shield monkey king trying to fight up against everyone gets the proc off of jingu but he's taking so much damage misses the bounty rune and now he might actually he's go down so here much so much of damage on him and i don't think it was really worth it there but in the meantime so two runes taken by underlord and task Okay, so it's a trade-off of one-to-one -one runes, okay. I was wondering whether Saracolo might be able to pick up an extra rune there, just because they were able to chase the Lich and the Marking out of that lane. But with that, a lot of trade coming in once again. The Lich, you can see, trading up against the Bane here, but Bane is someone you just can't trade up against. He still has that uh, bearing staff available as well, so when he wants to get a lot of, a uh, little bit of HP, he can always trade a lot better. And with that, you can see Monkey getting very aggressive here. Once again, the bearing staff does come out. He has used most of that region that we did see previously being used. And with that, is he going to be able to do anything about it here? Once again, you know, both these players have a few st stacks on them. But Monkey not in a position to be able to kind of uh, contest right here. Yeah, I think uh, the laning stage is going to be passive until uh, all these heroes hit around level 3 or so. And uh, both sides, I feel like, has the kill potential, especially this top lane. Oh, meanwhile, Courier. Hockey, come on. This That's guy. Courier. Hockey, leave this poor chicken alone. Okay, but he died for it. Oh, he died. Okay. Okay, the enemy team is going to be happy with it. So, first blood goes uh, towards uh, midnight there uh, with that Lich or Mandula. And. Uh, we do see this uh, Monkey King working out really well. Underlord is being pressured extremely well. Monkey King is farming, Underlord is not. And uh, mid lane is a different story altogether. The TA is having a better time than the OD in this uh, mid lane matchup. Uh, which is not, I mean, I feel like it is TA favored. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, it comes as long as he has refraction strikes, I, should be, I feel she'll be fine. But yeah. the thing about OD with his Astral is he has so much setup potential for his team. And meanwhile, uh, bottom lane, they lose the Lich to the Beaver there. Actually, sorry. Top the, lane, Beaver kills uh, uh, the Tusk. Tusk, my bad. So, like I said, kill potential on the top lane is very, very high on both sides. Uh, if the Shadowfin has mana, if the Tusk gets off a good Ice Shroud, uh, that's basically a kill going in favor of uh, Sarakollo. But, having said that, uh, you have the time... So, what killed a courier? How many couriers are dying, man? Leave the poor chickens alone, I swear. These guys have been added with getting caught in Meanwhile, Tiny gets I shot I shot it up here. Tiny goes in by the stun. But where is the damage coming out? The SF turns around and he does have another raise. He's got me enough. One more hit. He's running away. He sells up as well. And meanwhile, the Tusk is in a little bit of trouble. Tiny going to come in. One hit. And he does not have the Tusk. And in the meantime, bottom lane, the Bane goes down. Kills across the map. I'm trying to beat in people too. Oh my god, so much of action already. Three kills on the board for the three minute mark. And uh, Nature's Grip is the call? Okay. Nature's Grasp. Nature's Grasp is the name of the skill. Oh, uh, meanwhile, Aishrad blocked on the tree and tree and will go down here. Easy pickings for Mr. Toad Boss on that Shadow Fiend. Yeah, and he gets max stacks there for Necromastery as well. So that is going to help out quite a bit. So once again, more couriers have respawned after their deaths. <laughs> so this time, bottom lane seems to be going a lot better with this monkey game pickup right now. Is that going to be another dead courier? Please, no. Okay. Courier is dying left, right, and center. I think we've seen. I think in this game, we've had the same amount of courier deaths as, as hero deaths. Well, actually, though, actually one less. Yeah. Three, we have three, three courier couriers deaths. and four kills on the board. So that's a lot of couriers. This is the problem in giving people extra couriers? This will just left it at one courier. This wouldn't have been a problem. Yeah. <laughs> but right. oh, we might have an engagement bottom lane. Lich is in a bit of a scared position here. Minda needs to be careful. Brain Sap is going to be there. But in the meantime, Mark King is actually chasing the Underlord. And kind of too deep there. 
I think they were playing it really well. Uh, while the Mankling was getting stacks, the ma uh, Mandala on the ledge was baiting out the Bane there. Maybe a whiff next time. from Mr. Tenza Zengetsu. And an immediate better luck next time from uh, Hawkey there. I mean, this chat feels, man, it's so good. Uh, in the meantime, we uh, do have the mid matchup going on. TA has uh, completely dominated the OD in the lane. Tw uh, lane 25 last hits to uh, the 15, or the, uh, sorry, yeah, tw uh, 24 last hits to the 15. Meanwhile, on the top lane, Shadowfin gets taken down. The touch might go down here as well. The kill potential is insane on the side of uh, Tactical Nuke with this tiny and the uh, brilliant combination. We might have a game two on our hands if this keeps on going. SF really not working out. Meanwhile, bottom lane, the Bane gets taken out and now they're contesting for the rune as well as the... It is just the rune, the five minute rune actually. And the Lich will be a okay. No, oh, the block. The block, the block, the block. He's designed the punch. Punch and he is dead. And now the monkey is here. He wants to go off the task. Task taking a lot, of, a lot of damage here. One more hit. The bounder strike as well. One more right click. Oh no, it's actually one more. Can he get it? He finds it. He does get it. And now he wants to turn around. Going on the underlock. The Bane is coming in as well. He needs to get out of there. But the Lich joining the fight back up. If they want to maybe turn around here, but he does not have the frost shield with him. That's going to be it. Action packed Jota coming to you live right here at the Kalamu City Center. This is the Aids of Predator League. 2020 Sri Lanka qualifiers grand finals. Some great stuff coming out from both teams there. Finally, Sarakolo were able to get a few kills in that bot lane, but so far things aren't going too well for them. So, in terms of how everything has kind of turned out, so looking at the kills right now, we have Beaver with two kills, we have the Lich who has managed to secure himself two kills by two deaths as well. Tenzazan gets to manage to get two kills as well. So, after uh, respawning and coming back into the fight, he was able to use that bounder strike, get a kill on the task as well. So, it's a little bit back and forward, but right now, once again, oh, oh. coming in. No, it's a bit too deep to go for that. And just uh, just trying to keep the shadow screen at bay uh, from uh, going uh, to get those last hits and get his souls back up. But uh, I think I think Tactical Neo is playing a completely different game. They are not worried about the Underlord. They found the matchup to destroy him. Mandala with his book of drafting probably came into use here. But he carries around a book with him as I've heard and as I've seen before. I don't know whether he bought the book today might have bought it, I mean the big tournament, a lot of money on the line, probably bought the book along with him and uh, looked at how to counter the Underlord and to deal with the Drow Ranger. Probably has all sorts of strikes. Trading with Midnight, this time not going to use the Brain Sap, taking a decent amount of damage, there goes the Brain Sap, so the trade already so much better. And meanwhile, top lane, they actually dive in the Shadow Paint, few more hits should be enough and there we go, Tia Dash is doing that Shiny here. might go down in return as well, so they do trade off the safe lane for the off lane on the side of uh, Tactical Nuke and Sarakolo, which is okay. I, I think the Trian might actually be in trouble as well. Trian falling down low on top lane and the snowball is going to go forward. A couple of more right clicks away and he does have his, uh, what do you call it? Jeez, tag team. Tag team. How is tag so fast? Uh, between trees he walks faster. If I remember right. Yeah, and Underlord actually dies in the bot lane to uh, the Lich here. But even the Monkey King goes down, so more trades coming in. And this time Hawkey feels like Hawkey, very confident. Hawkey, he, he's confident he has the brains up ready for this. But is it going to be enough? Lich does have another one, but it's not going to be enough. It's level one. He needs to run away. And Hawkey with the last hit. 74 oh, damage. Geez. 74 damage right clicks coming out from there. <laughs> Insane amount of damage, man. Insane. I mean, the Shadow Fiend right now is in a world of hurt. Looks like they won't try and go on to the Tiny might be in a couple of the tag team is there as well. Trying, trying to get away the Santos onto both heroes. They want to chase, but they cannot chase this Tiny down. He's just too tanky. Now, oh, they won't around. turn around. The Lich is there with the Frost Shield. The Tiny is going in. The Courier is there. Don't kill the Courier. Shadow Fiend in trouble. Sinister Gaze as well. The Lich is onto the Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend might go down here. He will pop the wand and he will get taken down. And now, the Bane coming in. The Snowball forward. The Brain Sap not going to be enough. Beaver, what is happening? And the Tusk surviving on a bit of HP, but he will get taken down. That's three heroes going down on the side of Sarakolo. Tactical New takes away everything from Sarakolo and gives away absolutely nothing for that. Wow, what a play coming out from Beaver there to toss away the Tusk and then use that. Just get out as much damage as possible by tossing the tree. I thought he died to the eye, the eye shards. But he yeah. lived. He lived. He lived. Wow, what a play. I, I, think, I, I think the ice shards are level one, if I'm not mistaken, because he would have probably maxed out the uh, tag team. 
and uh, got like one level of each on the snowball as well as the ice shot, probably why. Uh, but I mean, that was so close because the Bane was so close to getting off that brain sap on the Tiny. And as soon as the Bane came into vision, Tiny actually used the avalanche to disrupt the Bane from actually getting off that uh, brain sap. And even after that, uh, he had one charger, the brain sap went out, it was not enough. The ice shot went out, it was not enough. And they all got away a okay. So with that, in this game, looks like the shoe has been placed on the other foot for now, even though it's a 12, 6 kill difference. The net worth doesn't say the same story. And with that, oh, body no. gets taken down. Did he go down solo? Yes. He did. That was a solo kill for the TA onto the OD. A bit disturbing for Kavi there. Uh, probably not what he was expecting because you normally hold on to your astral to you know uh, try and uh, get yourself out when the TA wants to go on you. But probably you should be. I go. Oh no! Do you guys instigate why the reward is going down? The nature's route is going to be the TA taking so much of damage. The frost shield as well. The TA in a world of war. They might be able to get this kill. Pops the. Oh, refraction, and they might be able to turn this off. Now the Shadow Fate joins the fight. The Lich will go down in turn. The OD is not going to be able to give us so, so close. The refraction in the last second, keeping the TA alive there. The patience from uh, Satan right there. Just, you know, hold patience on to it. Patience from Satan. Waiting in the trees. Waiting, uh, waiting near the tower? Trees? <laughs> I mean, technically it is nature's grass, so. Waiting under trees? Waiting in the weeds. Weeds. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, <laughs> managing, you know, pop that uh, refraction in the right time, turning the tables there and getting an additional kill and once again, uh, but this time, you know, Tenza in a very good spot. Oh, here. Monkey King with the ultimate, uh, but does not catch out anyone. I'm a bit of a preemptive uh, uh, Wukong's command there, but they might actually be able to get the underlord. Underlord getting uh, a lot of damage, but the first shield is down to the Monkey. Monkey needs to get the ground to strike off. He gets it on one. He will take down the chain the frost. The chain frost bouncing around on everyone, and they will take down two. Die? No, he's not dying. He's surviving still. He's joking around. Can they find him? He's trying oh, to GP Shabab! out. And Shabab! He gets out. No, Shabab manages to GP out. What a what a play! Reading the situation exactly, juking through the trees, manages to get himself out of there. What great stuff coming up from him, juking and diving there. Now the TA might go into for a solo kill onto the OD. Yeah. This is what I was talking about. The OD is actually using this astral. In oh, the low. Arcane rune, that's why. We had Arcane rune. I was wondering what was happening. Oh, yeah. Outplayed, outplayed with that Arcane rune, man. Oh, I do not think Satana was expecting that. I was not expecting that because. When he used the astral, I was like, why is he doing the same mistake that he did before? But he had an astral rune, which reduced the cooldown of his astral. He knew exactly what to do, and he got it off. And meanwhile, Tiny, Nightmare Dup, he's fighting up against two, and he gets tossed up in the air. The avalanche is there. He's trying to fight, but he's not going to have the mana for the avalanche. If he did have the mana for the avalanche, might have got a kill there. Wow, what a play from Kave coming there. He's going to recover so much from that uh, terror, that arcane rune coming in clutch. So really well played by him. And uh, Satan kind of knowing that he was in a little bit of trouble there, trying to run away, but just not going to be able to. And with that, another rotation coming in from Midnight. And this cheer is just doing so much work. That is game. a reason why this hero should be banned in the first place. I mean, you give it up and this is what happens. He runs rampant across the map. And meanwhile, we do see uh, the tier 1 items uh, being dropped here and there. People are picking it up and uh, they're doing certain things with it. We'll call it out when we see it on or when the enemy team sees each other uh, on the map. But in the meantime, Odi caught up a lot with that. Uh, he seems to be going in for that... Um, oh wait, I'm so not supposed to mention I'm sorry, but yeah, he's going in for an item which is interesting. It used to be built on just one player in Sri Lanka. I can't remember his name. Uh, he used to be a mid player. And he was the only one that I saw uh, who used to build uh, the item on OD. And we see that he's going. Meanwhile, oh, oh, uh, faking out that Wukong's command. I thought he might go for it. I mean, it's a bit uh, ambitious to say the least to go on an underlord like that with the Wukong's command there. But obviously, uh, knowing, uh, knowing his limits, not using it, just trying to scare the underlord out of the lane. And he was successful. Yeah, definitely. And with that, we're just taking a look at net worth right here. TA is still on top of the charts in terms of net worth. Then we have the Tiny and the OD. So the OD has recovered quite well after going down solo to the TA. But that one kill is all it takes. Just, you know, it gives you so much confidence as a player 
to be able to outplay someone like that and with that bottom lane is getting pressured right now we might see movements coming in from Saracolo to try and hold down uh, this uh, T1 tower but with that looks like they are going to back off once again the ice shards do come out to buy some time they get find the sentry they devour it as well and, but with that you know the teams are just going to be happy being able to farm the items that they need to get going uh, definitely so TA by the looks of it he is building into that desolator I mean bread and butter for TA desolator dagger is what you go for TA regardless of what game that you play I mean th those two items uh, not in that order maybe changes around a little bit but I mean that's bread and butter for the TA uh, the desolator bling dagger so probably uh, is what he's looking to get OD has caught up quite well he has uh, picked up uh, oh so he is going for the Italians I can call it out now interesting item choice Probably trying to build into the Agni Scepter later on. That long range save uh, with that uh, double astral from OD is definitely going to help. So, previously, uh, oh, meanwhile, bottom lane, the yeah, massive engagement. Wukong's come out. Red Frame of Souls as well. The, the chain was bouncing around. The Lich will go down here as well. Two heroes dead on the side of Tactical New. But they are fighting on the back line here. They do get on the task. And it's Eclipse. Takes down the Bane. And now the SF trying to chase people down. But the Odin needs to be careful, Odin might get run down here, the TA is following up, he wants to TP out, where is the stop, the pit of Malice is going to be there to cancel the TP, and double buy bets on the side of Caracolo to try and get that Odin, probably was not needed, but in the end, Yodi goes down, the three heroes dead on the side of Tactical Nuke, losing only two on the side of Caracolo, but technically they did buy back on two, so kind of even, I guess, overall. Oh, and the Tiny? Tiny going in onto the bin, he needs to be careful to toss back onto the ledge. He needs to be careful, the Underlord is going to be there as well, the Pit of Malice is there. They are fighting this up, the Frost Shield is there. There comes the Tusk, he is going to roll in on the Tiny. Tiny might go down here, there are so many heroes here. The Desolator doing the work, the Lich cannot get the Underlord. Underlord so tanky right now and they are trying to run away. Ice Shot blocking the Lich in perfectly and the Lich will get taken down here as well. And that was a bit, bit too ambitious to say the least from the tiny. Then he can walk through trees now? Um, yeah. He can. Apparently. He was able, I mean, after the change that was yeah, made. Yeah. Okay. It's so interesting actually. <laughs> <laughs> Getting up to date with the patch notes after being out of Dota for some time. Yeah, not some time, for a while. <laughs> for a while, <laughs> for a while. <laughs> So with that, Trian just being a huge, huge, huge nuisance here, trying to defend this C1 tower in the bottom. Oh no, the Tiny gets caught out from shots here. The task goes in onto the Tiny. Tiny needs to be careful. He gets shot up in here. He's going to be in a world of hurt. The task is going to be there and he will get taken down. And now the Trian is going to be in trouble. He's trying to walk away and he is going to just... Walls on out through the trees. Well, this brings new definition to hide in the trees. Oh yeah, hide in the trees. I told you to stay in the trees. Stay in the trees. Who was that? Yeah, I think it was Yeah, I think it was Zetwai Chai. Yeah. Can't remember. Either way, <laughs> that is like trying to kill a courier. Like, you know, it just like runs over trees. Yeah. What is that? It's like a Timbersaw or something. Yeah? Timbersaw at least breaks, like breaks his own path. This so is like he just mid tier walks. one tower gets denied by the dire team, which is Saracolo. Saracolo taking the game back very effectively with that team fight on the bottom lane. Now it's all even between the two teams. It was a, around a 3k to 3.5k Metro lead uh, in favor of uh, Tactical New, but they have bought it back and now it's back to all even. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, you know, it looks like uh, both these teams were able to get those a few of those items that they've uh, had previously. The Trient obviously having a huge impact into this game, uh, getting the shovel as well, using that quite as, uh, as often as possible, you know, try to get some extra bounty runes for the team. Uh, but Saracola right now, they are on in front here, they managed to bring it back, 1k gold lead going their way. Uh, it's been a bloodbath of a game, the last one was a very disciplined, uh, very well executed game and this one just seems to be all out war in every single lane. It's so hard to catch all the action as well. So right now, uh, they're just happy to kind of sit back and farm for items. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we have so much of kills on the board right now. Uh, it's almost 33 kills on the board. It's not even 20 minutes into the game. And 33 kills on the board is a lot of kills for a game of Dota. And I feel like this current patch also allows it to be as aggressive as they are playing it. And this is what Dota is right now. Aggression Dota, kills all around, action packed all around. And this is what we love. Uh, I mean, I'm not a fan of these farming metas that are there. And this is the kind of meta that I like to cast and to play as well.
Yeah, definitely. I mean, as long as there's action, that's the kind of that's the best kind of game, you know. And with that, looks like uh, Sarakolo looking to pressure this top T1 right now. The Unlord pushing the baby in. They do have, uh, I believe, the medallion. Yeah, so they do have medallion. He's managed to get a nether shawl as well. So he gets a decent amount of magic resistance. But will it be enough to save him from the OD? Is the question. Yeah, so the Underlord right now uh, probably top lasted, even though he's not top network. Uh, not entirely sure, but uh, meanwhile, top lane we do have an engagement here. Blink sword, he does have the desolate as well as the dagger. Tiny in the back line, they go with the sun on the monkey with the Wukong's command, catches all three. What a tail force and what a Wukong's command! Sarakolo decimated here. That's four heroes down, that's five heroes down. They were not expecting his team wiped. Not losing a single hero there, Sarakolo. Getting taken out in precision. What a team fight, what execution from Tactical Nuke. And now, the game back on Tactical Nuke's side. I mean, this game is insane. We have some great, great Dota in our hands. Yeah, I mean, in terms of team fight, I feel like the Tactical Nuke, the execution was just so much better. It was a beautiful Wukong's command into a three man boundless strike, into that beautiful uh, chain, frost. chain frost. And obviously, all the HPs disappeared when that Sanity's Eclipse hit. Yeah, I mean, uh, the team fight from uh, Tactical Nuke is much, much better than what uh, Sarakolo has to offer. But Sarakolo has the ability to burst down a hero extremely fast because of just the Shadow Fiend and the TA. I mean, so much of armor minus. Star. Obviously, TA being the uh, hero that, you know, jumps into the backline, takes out one target instantly with that melt strike. And uh, they have been able to do that meanwhile. Um, I mean, Things are going to settle down a bit. Oh, meanwhile, the Lich trying to TP out. He's not going to be able to do it. They did throw out uh, uh, Avalanche. But meanwhile, they are still trying to chase here. The urn is going to be there. They are chasing the Tiny. Tiny is in a world of trouble. He's going to uh, go forward with that roll. And the Tiny will get taken down. That's two quick kills going in favor of Saracolo. So this is what I was talking about. If your team and ultimates are down, Tactical New can't afford to get picked off because Saracolo's drop excels at killing single targets. I mean, if, if you are caught out one or two alone, they are 100% dead. There is no way that you get back. And meanwhile, OD... Solo kills... Uh, Underlord! Yeah. Was there another scientist introduced? No, no, it wasn't. Yeah. Just without anything at all. Maybe he didn't have too much health to work with. Maybe yeah. he was just like in the wrong place. At the and wrong he time. is going for that Aghanim Scepter as well. So double save for the OD uh, once he picks that up. And with the... Ether's lens is going to be able to do that from a million miles away and even land his ultimate from like a million miles away as well. And uh, things are settling still the lead going in favor of Tactical Nuke. Let's see what Sarakolo can do to take this back. I think they need the BKBs on the Shadow Fiend and the TA for sure. So runes being traded out here. Uh, one was picked up by Mantula at the 20 minute mark. None of the other runes are picked up. Actually, two being picked up now. Uh, from Mandula, the rest of the runes are uh, going... Where are the rest of the runes? Actually, three runes going in favor of... Yeah, three runes going in favor of uh, Tactical Nuke and one rune for Sara Kolo. So right now, things not looking too good for the side of Sara Kolo. Some great executive fights coming out from the side of Tactical Nuke. Uh, Tenza on his monkey king really showing a lot of prowess once again. Has a lot of these relics that he uh, has been using, but looks like at some point he's going to have to give it up for better upgradable items. Uh, I mean, right now, the majority of his damage is just coming out from all the items that he has picked up. So, uh, Shadow Fiend has the Vambrace with the Yasha picked up and drums on top of it as well. Decent farm, not the best right now. The highest net worth on the charts is the TA, followed closely behind by the OD, and just lagging behind is the SF and uh, the Monkey King. But it's definitely going to be interesting to see this next team fight when it happens because uh, the next items are going to be key, especially items like BKBs on certain heroes and uh, so on and so forth. And they do spot out the Bane here. Oh no, oh no, miscommunication. Astral on the Bane, and he gets sent off. This is going to be there, and they will clean this kill up. And another Astral on to the Tusk. This is really bad communication, and they will catch out. They have it. But that was extremely bad communication on the side of uh, Tactical News there, because if they did not use that Astral as well as the Avalanche on uh, just the Bane at the same time they would have been able to chase down another kill. But in the end, they did take down two for that smoke rotation that they did. Oh, Not... Odin finds the SF. 
Yes, sir. Might be in trouble here. He does not have BKB picked up. Yes, sir. Falling really low here. He does have the scientist if he wants to use it, and he will go down. No, Kavi showing up big here after failing during that first match. He is showing up, and he is showing up really well. He has the Agnim Center picked up. He has Ethers lens. He's getting multiple kills across the board, and these are all solo pickoffs that he's getting. Yeah, I know. It's actually very interesting because usually when you think, you know, power trades, either lanes, agonims, you don't really have too much to work with. But he actually has a really good amount of attack speed. He has a really good, strong amount of damage. And he's able to, you know, solo pick off uh, 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 players like SF. And just, you know, they're really punishing Sarapolo for the SF pick because even in the lane, he died multiple times. Right now, he can't seem to find the farm to kind of get up there and start being effective in these team fights. There's so much physical damage coming out from both the Tiny as well as uh, the monkeying and then you have magical damage coming in from the OD and that is going to be the next TV tower finally going down and uh, right now tactical new on, on fire Absolutely on fire. We might actually have a game three on our hands if it goes this way If tactical new can keep up the pressure like this not make any silly mistakes of like, you know getting caught out one by one or some sort of something like that We might have actually a game three on our hands and uh, I, I think uh, we will have to eat our words. We predicted a 2-0 at the start, and if it goes to a game three, we will have to eat our words. So with that, right now, looks like Tactical New really want to push that advantage. Slowly building it up once again, back to a 3k lead. Going for these next towers as well, and Saracolo trying their best to get some, you know, get some farm on the map. Try to utilize it. Try to maybe use the side of uh, Tactical Nuke and their jungle area. But right now. Uh, you know, we thought the... I think just giving the OD was the biggest problem here might be... Uh, um, I mean, I yeah, I mean... And then monkeying. 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 Just, just, uh, just because uh, previously the Underlord actually shut down the carry in the lane. But this time around, Tenza Zengestu was in no way shut down in the lane. He got his farm that was required. And he's showing up really big with those uh, big, big Wukong's commands. With that into the pit, uh, this time coming in from uh, uh, our tactical new. They do have information on this, they have uh, the trap inside. And uh, the thing about this is they do take quite a bit of time to uh, do this. I shot flies out. They know that this is happening now. Sarakolo, do they want to contest it? This is the question. We do see the TA on the bottom lane. He's uh, going to be coming in as well. Can they do this in time? How are they going to take this fight? Meanwhile, earn charge onto the tiny. The astral is going to be there. Huge look on someone disrupting everyone. BKB popped as well. Way too aggressive, way too early. And this is going to be real, really bad. And they will get the touch for this. But DA now showing up. Big, big, big. He's going to go after the, uh, uh, the monkey king. But the root from the tree and holding things back. Uh, the, SF with the Requiem muscles trying to get the Lich there. So both BKB is being expanded a little bit too early there. But can they find more? Bane, they are going to go on the Bane. Santos, he is dead. Two heroes dead. After, oh, right. onto the uh, Shadow Fiend by the looks of it. Shadow Fiend will get taken down. Here's the fight. Taxi on new. On fire. Takes down three. And the taxi gets out alone. Not carrying any passengers this time around. He goes back to base and CA gets the hell out of there with that haste rune and tactical new now looking to put the pressure on Saracolo charging down that mid lane might get tier threes are they going to be buybacks is Saracolo going to defend this are they going to fight this is the question but we see TA cutting the wave we see Satan doing his shenanigans what the boundless strike misses on the TA maybe maybe if we got that off but so this actually delays the push and they won't be able to do any sort of damage uh, on that tier 3 tower pick just because of the fact that uh, the TA was able to cut down one with the Meanwhile, the OD might be in a little bit of trouble here. He has trust himself for the time being. He does uh, have the bling dagger, but it is on cooldown for the time being, and they will disengage. The Glivers, the saves, having the double astral is always going to be a huge difference. And with that, Satan right now doing the only thing he can right now, and that is going to be pushing out these lanes, trying to force someone back. Maybe take the fight five versus four, try to break up that team composition coming out from the side of uh, Tactical Nuke. And Meanwhile, that bottom tier two is getting taken down, and we have more people uh, going towards the mid lane here. So how are they going to take the fight? Can they do this in time? Because the TA is still pushing down bottom lane. 
and they need to get back as well. They do not take Roshan fast enough. TA going to hit on tier threes as well. Roshan still not take it. The TA walking back up. The ice rod going to scout out everything. Roshan falling down low. Where are the TPs? They are not going to come in, and that's going to be Roshan picked up by Tactical Nuke. This is the first time that uh, Roshan was taken by the opposing team to Sarakol because it has been all Sarakol to Sarakol all this time. And this time around, oh, snowball forward, the boundary strike as well, and he was, I think, the squad of guard, and he will get taken down for 44 seconds. Now the question, are they going to push high ground? I mean, it'll be quite difficult. I mean, as long as TA has a few traps set up, uh, it's very easy to kind of deal with the wave as well, so he can just pop it here, and then kill the entire creep wave off. I think only the range creep will survive. No, he actually got taken out. So that's the whole creep wave actually going down. So once again, you know, that's something that we always have to keep forgetting to check the Terra is the uh, it's kind of the talent tree that they go for obviously at level 30 now. Once you hit max level, yeah. you unlock everything. But right now, before that, you obviously want to choose whether you want to go for physical damage build, whether you want to go for magical damage build, whether you want, whether you want your traps to be strong, whether you want them to be weak. Now my question is, will this go beyond 70 minutes? Will we uh, get to see those what the what's the tier tier five six five? Uh, it's tier six six right? Yeah. Tier six items. I mean, I have never seen. Twenty five, forty, tier five. Tier five items. I mean, I have never seen these tier five items in a game. So it might be the first time I see them. Meanwhile, we do have an engagement. of Bane falling down low, monkey and jumping forward. He cannot see the Bane for the time being. And the Bane is going to be a okay with that glimmer cape. Is going to be able to walk on out of there. So a little bit of a disaster mitigated right there, but with that Tiny going to go, in, go back and start pushing out this lane and Shaoban as well as Sharofin right now doing a great job of pushing out this top lane and trying to force someone back to kind of deal with this. There's a lot of farm in that area as well. They're trying to capture... Oh, the taxi! Taxi, taxi, taxi! They cannot catch this and they will be out with a passenger on board as well. This time around, the Underlord decides to take a passenger with him. Last time around, he just... I was like, I'm not taking anyone home with me. And he just went on out of there. So in the meantime, the tier was able to take down that mid tier one tower. Tiny might run into a hero here. And they do spot him out. The dust is going to be used by the touch. The ice shot not latching on him. Uh, and the astral is going to be there. Are they going to turn this around? Are there enough heroes to turn this around? And the question is, they are going to be disengaging at least for the time being. Tiny, 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 might get caught out here, where is the Astra, where is the Odin, not close by, and the Tiny will get taken out. Picked off alone, in foreign territory, actually on, on his own territory, but you know. I mean, very unfortunate right there. I mean, he had enough and more time to kind of blink into the trees and then try to disengage from there. Uh, but unfortunately, he did get pick up and that is going to give Sarah Cole a little bit of momentum. And once again, you can see the net worth lead just dropping down to 1k from 3k. I mean, this game is insane. We are hitting, uh, what's the, uh, 30 minutes now and uh, it's just a 1k lead uh, on the side of Tactical News. Just goes to show how these two teams are matched up. Both teams extremely good. I think Tactical New coming out with the better draft this time around. Uh, just uh, doing quite a bit of work. I mean, the and we saw so much effectiveness coming out from him during the initial stages of the game. But afterwards, as it goes on, obviously he starts to downscale a little bit. And even the Agonims, it's great for vision, but you know, at some point, you know, players of this caliber, they don't really allow you to kind of get onto the map and start planting uh, all these vision wards. You know, you usually can pick up a gem at that point when you really want it. Uh, but with that, you know, we have uh, some, I mean, they need to do something. I mean, they still have uh, the age is available on Monkey, they haven't utilized it yet, they haven't gone high ground. So let's see whether they can. Yeah, that's the biggest on. question. They haven't uh, put that Aegis into good use. And they need to, uh, you know, maybe find a couple of pick offs, uh, try and go high ground. They really need to do something with before the Aegis runs out. And, um, oh, meanwhile, they might find the Tusk. They do go on the Tusk. The Astral is going to be there as well as the Nature's Grass. Can they bring him down? They do have a snowball. The Sun is going to be there. And the Monkey fall down low. They do. Oh, the Sun is eclipsed. Might have been a little bit too preemptive just to bring down the task and they pop the BKB on the monkey king as well. Definitely not uh, worth it uh, for the team of tactical nuke there. Yeah, definitely, but I think, you know, Sandy's Eclipse is such a huge tool in these fights and this gives uh, Saracolo quite a huge window uh, once this, you know, Tusk kind of respawns to kind of go and get a pick up, maybe try to get on the map a little bit, try to take a little bit of control, uh, but with that, you know, once again, Tactical New using this 
uh, not being able to utilize the ages as well as they would like. But you know, overall they're getting the kills, they're getting a bit of gold, they're getting the items that they need. But BKB charges are running low, so it's going to be very difficult for them to keep this momentum going. Yeah, it's uh, definitely uh, looks a bit hard once the BKB cooldowns uh, does drop uh, low enough. But uh, I mean, both these teams uh, know exactly what they're doing. There were a couple of preemptive BKBs. I mean, probably was expecting you know things to happen and just wanted to pop the BKB before they got caught out to anything. And in the meantime, they do spot out the Monkey King, a huge loss. And now the Trient as well, SF pops the BKB, the chain was bouncing in, in between the SF and the Underlord. Requiem of Souls is going to get popped as well. The Lich is going to use his ghost scepter and walk on out of there. In the meantime, on the back line, we do lose the tiny. Uh, as well, so two kills, two quick kills going in favor of Saracolo. It's a great timing coming out from the rotation from Saracolo, and they actually catch the Monkey King. That's a dieback. What? Did he just die back? Yeah. What was he even doing there? They might have actually had vision over him. They are coming, coming onto the tree, but this is so unfortunate. They might have just thrown the game here. Down charges, Saracolo. Looking to take more. They oh wait, Lich? They, yeah, they, they Lich and uh, OD kill the SF. Okay, okay, okay. Things might happen now. They uh, might be able to hold this still. I mean, oh come on. I, I feel like Sarakolo had that until they lost the SF. But they still have the TA and the TA does so much. I mean, he has picked up the Desolator, has the Deso, has the extra 90 damage as well. Uh, sorry, 20 damage. 20? 35. 35 damage. But instantly restores 4 every health. That's a lot of health to actually be using. And with that, they'll be losing this tower really fast once again. Oh, here comes. Oh, the they want to fight this. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. Not again, but a huge sanity on the two heroes. Can they bring anyone down? They are going after the Underlord. Underlord dead. TA going after the Odi. Odi falling on load. Chains was bouncing between two. TA goes down. And that is four heroes dead on the side of Saracolo. Tactical new showing up big, big, big. But the problem is again, they're messing up this combination. The Astral on two heroes into the Avalanche on the two heroes. What are these guys doing? I mean, that fight would have been a lot easier if they had combined that perfectly well. But they're messing up and they're still winning the fight. And this sanity is eclipsed. Jesus, man. That damage so much of damage. Yeah, there's so much damage coming out uh, from the sanity eclipse. You can see it. Uh, he didn't even steal anything. He just used double astral. He dropped the hammer. And he was literally one shot from that point. But even then, Sadan having a lot of confidence to go back in and trying to hold. But with that, we might see the first team to knock on high ground right here. Meteor hammer. Meteor hammer damage. I mean, doesn't do a lot right now. But, uh, oh wait, actually it does it. damage over time. My bad, my bad. But the Underlord is spawning. Will they be able to hold this? And hold, oh, bring forward. And the... Once again, Danish in mid by the way. in mid -air. These guys need to coordinate this a lot better. They will have to back off now. If they did not Astral there, they might have been able to get the Underlord there. Force him to maybe buy back. Maybe he did not have buy back. Who knows? Might have been a different fight altogether. They need to come by. They can't be making this mistake over and over again. This is not the first time. This is not the second time. And the Wukong's command is going to uh, be laid down. They are going to work, work on the tier 3 tower. And that's the first tier 3 tower falling down. And that is Sarakola losing the tower. Meanwhile, Dust Pop, they want to chase. They are trying to find. But it's the Monkey King. They are not catching the Monkey King anytime soon. Ice Shot does not catch out anyone. And they will be able to get out scot free. They will claim the first tier 3 tower tactical new in charge of this game right now but it's still a 3k network lead in favor of tactical new this is anyone's game right now what a game number two we are having here at the grand finals between tactical new and saracolo i mean they really need to find a way to kind of abuse the downtime on the sanity's eclipse uh because it makes it very difficult that means you can see the damage coming out oh the trap gets popped oh, no, 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 but no he actually gets the astral off can he blink yes all the astral remaining and no he drops down down for 92 seconds does he have the buyback will he buy back is the question and can shadow colo push in this is going to be interesting to see the creep wave is not with them the mid creep wave is not with them they have time they are waiting for the creep waves to push in this the SF goes back to try and push them in and they will be pushing down mid. They need to take down this mid tier 2 tower. They want the mid uh, mid tower because they have lost their own mid tower. 
so they're looking to take down this mid tier uh, tier three tower as well. They have enough damage to go to the back door, I guess. Yeah, they do definitely have the damage with the SF as well as the uh, the TA here. And now they come knocking and the Wukong's command is going to go out holding the base. I do not think it was needed. Maybe, maybe. I, I'm uh, very hard to call whether that was the right play. But uh, definitely uh, they do land it out. But Sarakolo is still looking to uh, push. They know that they, uh, the Wukong's command is down. Can they burst the target down? Again, Avalanche, the, oh my god, the damage on the Underlord, Underlord still alive though. Meanwhile, on the side, we do have uh, the tiny, I mean, the same protein, little bit of BKB popped on the, uh, the monkey, monkey can get the he is dead for 75 seconds. The fiends, if they do bring down the Underlord, but can they find more? The, uh, the Shadow Fiend with the Red Cream of Souls, they will bring down the Tiny as well. Tiny down for 74, 65 seconds on the Monkey King as well. Are they going to go for more? They only lost the Underlord, but do they have the HP? Meanwhile, the top creeps are knocking on the top tier 3 tower as well. Sarakolo needs to keep an eye out for that as well, and they are looking to be backing off, but the Monkey King down for 50 seconds. This is the point. Can Sarakolo turn this back? The network lead is back in favor of Sarakolo. Not a lot, it's less than 1,000, but it's back in Sarakolo's favor. I mean, this network has not gone above 3K. We are looking at a network chart that has been uh, chipped in between 3K uh, on either side. And uh, they are going to uh, be able to, you know, uh, go for more here. Sanitary's Eclipse is there. The Ori is back up. The Chinese is down for 30. The 22 seconds on the mountain. Roshan is going to get claimed by the TA, he does have the cheese as well, so a lot of HP to work with, a lot of lives to work with. He basically has two lives to work with during the fights. Wow, what an engagement coming in from Sarakolo right there, being able to pick off that OD, which is the most important thing. The TA, when she crits, she crits and those things hurt. And in the next six minutes, we'll be seeing the tier four items coming out, Terror. And that is going to be a game changer. Like I said, the first game where we might see tier five items, who knows? I mean, it could go all the way, but right now, Sarakolo in possession of that second Aegis of Immortality. So they are in a really good spot right here. They're going to be able to use this quite well. I think they put it on the TA. So the TA, as, as long as she can tank and maybe force out the Sanity's Eclipse and then take the second one, I think they have a really good chance of taking these fights because you can see the TA just melt the Monkey King, melt the OD. They do not have the armor to fight all the minus armor coming out from the side of Sarakolo. I think, oh, 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 mid lane, they need to be careful. Meanwhile, rooted up is the time. Tiny, tiny needs to be careful, he gets limited up for the time being, can they find more here? Odin needs to be careful, Eye shot flies out, they are snowballing forward onto the Lich, Lich gets trapped up as well, they might be able to get the task, the task is going to fall down here. Getting a bit aggro, will get taken down. They do kill the Tiny though. Oh, they got a trade-off on the Tiny there on the side, so that's a better trade-off coming in favor of Sarakolo, can they find more? Astra is going to be there on the SF, they are moving forward, can they take this fight, they are trying to back off. The OD needs to be careful as well. Multiple TPs are blinking out. They are out. Yeah, so with that, Sarakolo turning the tables right here, taking a 4K lead when things look so good for the side of Tactical Nuke. I mean, if you look at it, they have 11 kills more. It's 38 to 27 in terms of kills. It's a lot, a lot of them I mean, fighting. But in terms of network, they're so even, they're so close, it makes it so difficult for them to try and close this game out, even with the ages of immortality. I, I think it's just because of the fact that uh, uh, the Shadow Fiend uh, inherently farms much faster than uh, the Monkey King. I think that's where the network discrepancy is there right now because the Shadow Fiend is at around 16,000, whereas the Monkey King is at around 13,000. And then on top of that, you have the TA who farms way, way faster than anyone else and he's sitting at around 25,000 network uh, compared to the OD who is at around 19,000. That's where, where the network discrepancy that we are looking at. But uh, still, the ages is still there. Uh, and now we do have the tier four items out. Is that 40? No, so it's 45 minutes. 45, okay, my bad. Yeah, so I believe it's uh, 7, 15, 25, 40 and 70. So that means technically it should be out. Yeah, it's uh, because I think the item that the uh, Bane picked up right now uh, was a tier 4 item. I'm not entirely sure. No, it was one that had been dropped for a while. It only does gives you like 8 uh, health regen, uh, 9 HP regen. Oh, okay, okay. That's a, that's a tier 2 item, I think. Yeah, yeah. So they, they, multi they pinged it multiple times. You can check the tier. So it says it's a tier 3 item. Oh, ah, okay. So it's literally not that great. Of a, for a tier 3 item, it's not that great. So in the meantime, Sarukolo knocking on 
Heaven's door right now, not on heaven's door, on radiance on door. On radiance door. <laughs> I mean, technically, radiance can be the heaven. heaven. Yeah, so. Skirts, lessons, sentinels, yeah. all door to two lock. Anyhow, getting back into the game at hand, <laughs> we have Sarakola knocking on the radiance door, but they are looking to push out a little bit more. Uh, they, I mean, they are also afraid of uh, just taking this fight. They know that the OD is extremely strong. They have to worry about the Sunday's Eclipse. They need to worry about the Wukong's command. The team fight from the side of Tactical Nuke is extremely strong. Even with the Nages and Chiefs, I feel like it's not going to be enough. Because, and you have, so you have Sunday's Eclipse, you have Wukong's command, you have Chain Frost, you have uh, what you call Overgrowth as well. So much of ultimate, so much of control during the team fights. It is definitely not easy for Sarakolo to take a fight. Yeah, so right now, very important item actually being picked up on Shaoban as well. So revealing it's going to be the Halbert and with that he has picked up uh, the tier 4 item with less shake because it gives you a thousand max health increase with uh, just a minus 400 in terms of mana which is okay with so but he's 3740 hp right now with a decent amount of attack oh, speed. Oh, on the back line we did see one astral on the side here. Uh, not sure whether they were trying to go on anyone there, it was just on the tusker but the OD does back off after just astraling him for the time being. So right now what uh, Sarakolo has been doing is uh, they have uh, use the ages to take down all the outer towers at the time being. So right now, uh, another some... really good tier 4 item on the OD. So on the OD, it actually suits quite well, and that uh, Sanity's Eclipse is going to hit like a truck, like an absolute truck for sure. So uh, I think the ages is still there. I don't think it was claimed. Oh, it just timed out. <laughs> it just timed out. Feels bad. I, I, I was wondering why the ages wasn't gone all that time. I was. Having a rough estimate of the time, but uh, as oh, I that's said, just a very good tier four item. I mean, it is it's pretty oh, good. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty actually, good. It's good. Okay, I'm really sorry. We still have to read these tier four items or all the items for that matter. I mean, there are 52 items to get through. We've been living with all the normal items that we had all our lives, and they, then Vav decides to add like 52 other items into yeah, the game all of a sudden. Going to take a bit anyway, of time. Anyway, the item being picked up is actually very useful on the hero that was able to pick it up yeah. because you know that uh, reduction is going to give him so much uh, space, so much ability to uh, dish out different types of damage. And if he gets uh, looking at his talent tree, he's actually gone for the damage instead of the other damage. Yeah. So it might not be the best thing, but with this it might help out. Well, out of well, and since the Shadow Fiend hasn't completely gone for a, a, a damage build up here, we do see the Mata style and the BKB picked up. Uh, that's about it for the time being. And uh, multiple tier 4 items, this game is going on for a while, man. I mean, this, this is the game of Dota that we were looking for. Meanwhile, again, Sarakolo looking to knock on the Radiant doors here. Does the Radiant want to take a fight? And if they do, how do they want to take it? So with that, we do see Monkey King split pushing the top lane though. So great stuff coming out from him. And with that, oh, they're trying to catch him. They're trying to catch him. The task is there. Can he spot him out? And once again, just so much mobility. There's no way they're going to catch up to him. He should be able to make it out. Yeah, I mean, he should be able to get out just because of his boundless strike uh, with that talent tree being able to leap across basically the map, I feel like. And he is definitely a harder hero to catch. Meanwhile, Tiny is extremely fat, fat, fat. He has his uh, crystal is picked up. He has that Echo Saber picked up. He got another item delivered to him right now. So he is going to be dishing out quite a bit of damage during these engagements. A lot of uh, back and forth chasing action here. A little bit of cops and robbers. But with that, you know, he's going to be able to make it back into safety. So he has some pretty decent items as well. So if you can take a look right here, so he has some uh, great utilities that he can use. Uh, once again, another tier 4 neutral item that is going to come into handy against most of these uh, heroes and if they do manage to the close the gap. How Kama picked up on the Monkey King since he did show himself in the lane. We can mention it. Oh, so wow, okay. That is, uh, that is pretty interesting. Uh, so. Uh, I used that item once in a game, that was about it. I mean, it is okay, but the way that the game is going on right now, if a team is going to be knocking on a tower, they're going to be breaking it. They're not going to be doing this hanky-panky work of, you know, damaging it a little bit, going back to farm for a million years and then come back. Right now, if someone wins a team fight, they are going to be knocking on a tower, and they'll be taking that tower unless someone buys back. And uh, either way, I don't think it, it 
will come to use that much, but it does heal quite a bit. So TA also currently sitting at level 27, so just about three levels away from unlocking her entire kit here. And uh, we will have to definitely wait and see how the next fight falls. Oh, they do find out one the tiny. Uh, oh, it it no, the shadow queen with the rest of the tiny is so tanky. How can they take this fight? The wall of sponge onto the tiny. Tiny falling down low. Tiny might go down here. The avalanche on the multiple hero. Do they want to take this fight? Monkey jumps forward, pops the BKB. But there is nothing that he can do. Everyone's disengaging. They want to go on the TA. TA gets popped out. TA might be in a lot of trouble here. He's getting chased down. Can they fight it? Boundless strike onto two heroes. But the fiends rip from the brain onto the Monkey King. Monkey King falling down. There is no stoppage of that. Monkey King gets tiny dead. Three and dead. That's three heroes down on the side of the you. Now the Bible. Oh, he's getting chased down. They are trying to find the Lich as well. Lich with, oh no. Oh no, not again. With the chain for the Astro. Both the heroes, they are messing up this kill so bad here. What is happening? A little bit of panic settling in right now onto the side of Tactical Nuke here. Kaveh just wanting to save the Lich and have someone and not have them expend their buyback. So maybe it was at the end of the day, maybe the right decision to make they right They did there. buyback on two different heroes. One was the Tusk and one was the Monkey King. And immediately Saracolo decided to back off. They didn't want to take the fight afterwards. Because I feel like they need to have the Tiny alive just to cancel the Fiend's Rip match. Both the fights are tactical new. Oh, oh yeah. no! Not again! Not again! What is this repeat telecast of the 70s show? <laughs> what is happening? Oh, the heck's coming out onto heck's the coming lich. out onto the lich. Lich might go down here and he will get taken down. They need to be careful. Another astral onto the shadow pin. Not going to keep him alive. They have been messing this up. Left, right and center. The name of the game has been the OD. Not synergizing with the rest of his team. The astral. What is happening? What are these astros? Oh no man, oh no. I swear to God this game would have been over a lot faster and Tactical New could have won this if they had got this combination right. And with that, Roshan will be going down in favor of Sarakolo and that is a rich question. Oh. Oh, actually, so look, look at that. Guess who picked up a decent item. Might be good on OD. No, he actually wants to use it? Um, um, questionable. I feel like it's better on Odi, but we'll have to wait and see whether they do uh, transition that out. Uh, but oh, okay. So he's using it for the passive effect. Oh, okay, okay. But uh, regardless, right now, edges, cheese, refresher orb on Sarakolo. Things are looking pretty bleak indeed for uh, tactical nuke here. Eleven thousand net worth lead has been built. The Shadow Fiend chasing oh, after oh, oh. the Monkey King, but Monkey King, obviously, not the easiest hero to catch. I shot flies out, does not spot out anyone. Bane trying to find someone as well, not going to spot out. He's just leaping miles and bounds to safety. And I'll, I mean, if Sarafolo does not push now, I don't know when they can push. I mean, they've managed to break free of that 3k, 1k net worth lead, and now they're currently leading with. 12,000 extra in terms of net worth. This TA is currently level 28, almost level 29. Getting oh, well, Astral onto the TA. The Audi does have Lincoln, so he does get popped. And they will back off. I mean, they are not pushing. I, I, I feel like they still cannot take an outright fight, even with all these items that they have, uh, especially the Aegis, the Cheese, and the Refresher Shot. They need to uh, maybe kind of get a pick up. They need to get capitalize on a mistake that uh, Tactical Nuke might make. And right now, oh no, the Tiny gets caught out. The Rod of Vapors as well as the Pit of Malice holding the Tiny in place. He gets slept by the Bane as well. And the, uh, the Tusker rolls in the Punch Up India. And that's four heroes coming, actually all five heroes coming to kill that Tiny off. So this might be that opportunity that they were looking for right now. Terra looking to go into the high ground, maybe get some pressure placed here. No team has taken rats. It's only going to be Tactical Nuke who have taken that one tier three. And with that, once again, Monkey King trying his best to kind of delay this inevitable push coming in. 65 seconds on the sideline. Is the Tiny here? Will he be able, will his team be able to hold the line? The TA and, and this. Uh, actually, 52 minutes into the game as well. Uh, another Astral onto the TA trying to delay things. Astral onto the Underlord as well. It's holding things a bit, a bit of an early frost shield, to be honest. Uh, there was not even a creep nearby. Uh, in the meantime, TA trying to go on the top lane. 
the OD oh, managed out. to blink out. They are going to work on this top uh, 3 d tower. The TA jumps to the side. They saw the monkey jump to the side. Meanwhile, the Wukong's command gets the bounded strike on the oh, oh my god! That Atlanta Detectives immediately deleting the TA. And TA getting locked down. He does have the cheese. He has the BKB. He pops it. He's trying to run away. Can he run away? Blink, monkey King chasing. He, oh, he gets the blink off. And now the man is going to be in trouble. He's going to get nailed down. He will get taken down. Meanwhile, no, he's surviving. The ghost. Uh, the ghost sector is going to be there and now they are trying to turn around but the field ship is going to get cancelled by the tiny they will take down the touch that's two heroes dead the bye from the underlord bye from the tiny they are looking for more but the ta still running away can he get out can he get out they are trying to chase after the uh, uh, sorry, the after the bay, 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 Glimmer Cape is there. Can he chase? Where is he going to go? He is looking for him. He sees him. He sees him. Does he have the jump? He is chasing still. He is chasing still. He gets the jump off. Another yeah, Glimmer Cape. Cape. He is sleeping out. He does not have the bound left. He gets away. But in the meantime, a die back on the underlord. The OD manages to clean out the underlord. This is the time that Tactical Nuke can push. There is absolutely no deep push on the side of uh, Saracolo, and if they cannot take a rack now, they are never going to get a rack. So right now, great stuff coming out from both these teams, giving us an exciting game. But Underlord, die back, 103 seconds on the sidelines, 59 seconds for the task as well. This might be the first set of racks that are about to go down. And if we go for another 16 minutes, uh, Atera, we have the tier, tier five. 5 items. Tier 5, let's go. We might actually see the Tier 5, or the game might just end right here. 50 more minutes into the game, knocking on the racks. Mid racks gone. Where are the buybacks from Saracolo? Are they going to buy back to defend this? We'll have to wait and see. Your guess is good as mine. They are knocking on the tier 4 towers. How are they going to hold it? Hold it! The ball is fine! Go ahead! But then he can be popped on the SF. He's charging up the red wave. The tiny falling down low. He's going to be safe. The answer. The wheel slip onto the monkey. Dead. 420. From the OD. Take down 2. There's a buyback from the OD. The TA fighting out Shadow Wind falling down. Satanic, not going to be enough. Shadow Kolo holds. Shadow Kolo holds. They might get another. That's a full team wipe and Shadow Kolo holds the base. What a fight. What a, what a comeback. Oh my god, that's Satanic from the Shadow Wind. And now the buybacks are coming up from Tactical Nuke. Has the game turned on its head? Can Shadow Kolo close this out? We'll have to wait and see whether Tactical Nuke can hold this out. Who is going wow. to buy back? The, the, the Shadow Fiend just stood his ground and fought with that oh, trigger and turned around. The Hicks coming out and now the buybacks. And the worst part is the OD refreshed to use that second and it is Eclipse. And now the buybacks are coming out. Three buybacks on the side of Tactical Nukes. Can they hold this? They are holding the tier 3 tower for the time being. They are afraid to push. Saracolo do not want to push. They, if they die, this is game over. They cannot afford to die. But it's a die back on the monkey. It's a die back on the tiny. They need to utilize this right now, Terra. The taxi should be coming right here. And here he comes. All that damage coming through. The, the tier 3 tower, the heels, the glyph holding it down. The astros, they might go in onto the train. Oh, and the for 120 fire. seconds, two heroes to defend the base. Can Saracolo finish this out? This might be a 2-0. They, they, they are going to go. Win. They want to win. They want to win. No, they want to go back onto the wax. Uh, the Monkey King back in 35. Tiny back in 33. They want to get the wax. Wax are still being held. The Lich, the first shield, doing so much of work. They will clear out the mid tier 3 as well as the wax. They want to go for the top tier 3. They don't want to throw this game. They want this wax. They are holding the ground. Can Sa Tactical Nuke turn this around? 17 seconds on the Monkey King. 15 seconds. Hex onto the Lich. Get okay, Astral down. He has the Astral. He might have another Astral if he gets forced off 10. They will clean out another set of racks. The Monkey King back in 5 seconds. The Tiny back in 4 seconds. Another Astral onto the SF. Can they hold this? Can they find a kill here? Oh, 35 seconds. Monkey King jumps forward with a boundless strike. Where's the, the vision? Came. Where is the vision? Boundless strike as well as the Mokong's command does not catch out anyone at all. And Saracolo will be able to get out scot free. No, 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 I don't think they want to get out yet. They're oh, they might actually turn around. They are going to snowball forward, but he cannot find anyone. And now the Astral is going to be there onto the task. They want to find more. Meanwhile, the TA is rotating bottom. They will clear out the task. They have to go bottom. They are losing bottom tier 3 tower. Odi jumps forward with the Astral Two onto seconds. the SF. Two seconds. The Monkey King jumps forward with the BKB. Where is the field slip? Monkey King falling down low. He will get taken down. Buyback from the Monkey King. 
the lizard or the rest or the tent. He needs to survive. He is falling down low. Monkey King coming back up. Boundless strike. All the three heroes. The underlord falling down low. But they lose the Odi. Down for 123. With a Bible. This down for 100. With a Bible. Shadow of Wings. Standing in front. Everyone's dead. Falling down. Tactical new. Team wise. And there you have it, guys. That is GG. And that is Sarah Colo taking game number two against Tactical New. They will be your winners of the Sri Lankan qualifiers here at the Asia Premier League 2020. They will be the representative for Sri Lanka in the Philippines fighting for 400,000 US dollars. What a game. What a game. Jesus, man, I was not expecting such a good game for the second game. The first game was such an easy game for Saracolo, but Saracolo was pushed to the brink of defeat and they had to pull out all the tricks from the bag to come back from that game. But what a game, man, what a game. I'm out of breath. I'm sure the players are out of breath. But we will be right back with the award ceremony. I cannot even continue, man. We will be right back. Do stay tuned in. We will be having the award ceremony shortly with more. Uh, amazing, there's an amazing trophy. I forgot to mention that there's an absolutely amazing trophy. Yes, you all right. will, yeah, it's a shield. You all will be able to catch that live on stream as well. So, do stay tuned in for that. We will be right back.